has hit us hard here in Rock Hill. It's coming down, torrential downpour. With this much water coming down, players, as soon as they find even an ounce of grip, they just have to get ready and throw. And that can be very dangerous at the Winthrop Arena with so much out of bounds. It feels like a box of chocolates type of day, Philo. We never know what we're gonna get out here. Yeah. Go. I mean, the field didn't want to see Chris Dickerson at the top after uh, day two. They don't want to see this guy at the top right. after day three. Absolutely not, oh, dude. man. Chris Dickerson, that's why they call him the, the robot. He's a guy who really doesn't make many mistakes. He really repeats the swing over and over and over again, especially on the putting green. That's where you really need it. The Chris Dickerson is going to be one stroke behind Paul McBeth coming into the championship round. Martin Hendel's going to find himself back on the lead. Oh, it is. How about that? Yeah. One of Canada's best players. The arm talent on that man is unbelievable. Look at that backspin for Ricky Wysocki. You call that a bullseye. Pretty much drop that into the basket from that close. Boy. Get your popcorn and your snacks ready, folks. It's going to be a show. Welcome back to beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina, and Winthrop University for the final round of the United States Disc Golf Championships. This is a life-changing tournament to win. Who's it going to be? We'll find out in a few hours' time. I am Ian Anderson in the booth with my man Philo Brathwaite. We're in for a treat today. Absolutely. Championship Saturday out here at USDGC. Title's coming. Who's it going to be, right? Paul McBeth, he's in the driver's seat with Chris Dickerson, defending champion, right on his heels. We've got a really interesting lead guard today. Yeah, we do. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. It's going to be a fun watch. That it is. Uh, yesterday, the five-time was on fire. Let's check out some highlights from that. Paul McBeth, this is, you know, he's talked about the putter kind of failing him this year, and it was working yesterday. Yeah, I didn't leave much on the ground. No putts left behind. Maybe just a couple overall. I mean, for the conditions and the circumstances, that was McBeast mode, like, fully activated. Four makes from circle two. Big time stuff right there. He needed all of them, too, because he was behind by five or six coming into the round, and fortunate for him, Chris Dickerson had some issues out there on the track, and McBeth just able to pretty much get just about everything, <laughs> even that little, you know, extra little bounces. He didn't make that putt, unfortunately, but, but it gave him an opportunity. But time and time again, you know, for the most part, he pretty much just dissected this course the way that you'd like to, pushing the limits on some of the holes. You know, hole 11, you know, showing off the, the D. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Same thing on 12 on that second shot, really taking on that big OB swath out there on the right side. And, you know, he really put together a masterpiece out here per the conditions. It's not a course record, but I mean, for what happened yesterday with the rain and how slick it was and bad conditions, this little break right there could have cost him an extra one, but it didn't. It could be you know, tied right now. It could be all different kinds of things. Yep. And that's the beauty of this event is that you just never know. Like you said, kind of a box of chocolates kind of event and a day yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a look at the graphics. So, Paul Beth. oh, zero OB throws, throws yesterday. That helps. That does help. I said that early on, man, you can't give him back, and he gave zero back yesterday, and that's the way to do it. That's the way to make moves. One of his favorite tags. Making moves. The only Making player moves. in the field without an OB shot yesterday. That's pretty solid stuff. I'm not sure if uh, Ulibarri had an OB, but he was bogey-free. Must have saved. Must have saved something. Wow. Good stuff. That looks like the five-time is getting ready. Warming up on the green. Two-time USDDC champion trying to add his list to the players with three, Kleimel, Schultz, and Schusterick. Yeah. yeah, he wants to be in that conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> he wants to be in every conversation you can think about when it comes to major championships and titles and the such and the like. And uh, Building that legacy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what he said when he got that first one. You know, we're chasing the legends. We're chasing their legacy, you know, and we're trying to create our own, this new era of disc golfers. And he has been the catalyst, Mr. McBeth. And, yeah, there's a lot of guys that are really trying to be like him, you know, right now, that's for sure. He set the standard. He has set the standard. Ricky Wysocki, a part of that movement as well, really chasing. That was the only guy that was really anywhere near Paul for any 
good five or six years. The only guy that was really consistently putting any pressure on him. Now they're trading off back and forth between first and second in the world with Eagle McMahon sometimes sliding in there. Yeah. It's, it's been a fun watch these last four or five seasons. Oh, you gotta love it. Ricky Wysocki currently tied for fourth, but he will be on the chase card due to the hot round yesterday from Martin Hendel. Kind of got two stories on the lead card, Philo. You've got your, your heavy hitters and Paul and Chris, and you got your underdog story with Martin and Drew. It's, Absolutely. It's going to be cool to they watch. Can't, you know, they're not, yeah, it's going to be fun because obviously Chris and, and Paul are in a head-to-head -head kind of battle mm -hmm. at the moment. they got a little bit of breathing room behind the next two guys, but they can't slack. They don't want to get too caught up in all that, and all of a sudden here comes Rick or Simon or even a Kyle Klein or a Nate Sexton. He knows how to get it done out here. Conditions are a little bit breezy outside. It it's it's kind of gusty out there. Some of these holes are really going to challenge the guys, you know, uh, their patience and, and their focus because it gets swirly out here at the arena. You know, there's a few holes where you can anticipate, but some things are a little... You never know. That's also going to cause some major havoc on five right here. Yeah, it's going to be a fun watch today, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys are ready to rock and roll. Ricky Wysocki is about to hop on the tee. Somewhere around circle of edge for Ricky Wysocki. Birdie look. Birdie look. Gonna have a little bit of a helping wind as well. Back up the grade. Being five back is gonna need all of those today. Yes, he is. <laughs> we have been saying this name so much this year. Kyle Klein. He is making himself a household name quickly. Absolutely. Play. Yeah. Inside circle one. 2017 United States champion from Olympia, Washington. Please welcome Nate Sexton. Nate Sexton, returning United States disc golf champion. Nate Sexton takes the tee of one. Who was going forehand before? Maybe he was listening to the, no, there is no rebroadcast. So yeah. <laughs> yeah so maybe somebody gave him a little note. Go. Looks good to me. That should work. Yeah. yeah. Beat it for the most part. He's going to have somewhere in between circle, maybe 35er. And Winner Joel the Freeman. The 2018 Open and the 2021 Carolina Class from Loveland, Colorado. Please welcome Joel Freeman. This man that's for success today, sir. Yesterday was the pants, today <laughs> just the, the button up. You can't do both in one day, it would just be too much. Yeah, you would just be sending people's brains on the fridge, huh? <laughs> Joel catching the very early Guardian Rock. Not a bad reaction off of it, though. No, he made both the mandatories. He'll be able to scramble, get his three. Yeah. Our man Nate Perkins is on the ground. I've heard he's got a little intel. What something's happening with Paul McBeth right now. Um, get a little intel there from Nate. Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Disc Golf Network. I'm Nate Perkins, and I am happy to be your eyes on the course today. It's Championship Saturday. We already hear the roars in the background. The sun is out. Our players were faced with rain yesterday. It looks like the rain is going to hold off today. We still have that steady wind out of the northeast, which we see become a factor as we round the corner into the back nine. Martin Hindle makes his first appearance on a lead card final round at a major ever in his career. He's actually second in circle two and circle one in regulation. Drew Gibson, no one's throwing the disc better than him. He is first in circle one in regulation. Let's see if he can settle the nerves and make some putts to push the man in the lead, Paul Macbeth. We actually just got word that he is playing with poison ivy on his throwing hand. 
can he hold off Chris Dickerson? He's only got a one-stroke lead. Philo, Ian, enjoy the action today. Thank you so much, Nate, and a great report from Perkins there. Did you see that yesterday? No. Where the heck did he pick a PO from? Yeah, like Poison if, if it's in the like, air, Paul McBeth will catch it. He's oh my goodness, hyper man. allergic to it. I was buttoned up from head to toe yesterday. Yeah. Mm, found himself in the fairway all day. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder where he got it. It was on his hand already yesterday. I guess so. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder where he got it out yeah. here. Nate Sexton. Switching to the stagger for his birdie look. And the firefly is just a little short for Nate Sexton. Par coming on hole one. While we had that interview, Joel Freeman pitched up very nicely for par. Indeed he did. Yeah. Was well executed approach shot. Give him a scramble stat early on here, round four. And I know it's early, but this is already a big putt for Ricky Wysocki. Four birdie on hole one. Gap closes to four. Well, like we were saying, if he's going to put any kind of pressure, he's got to get off to a hot start. He's got to birdie these first three, maybe four or five holes to make a statement. So if those guys get a little loose out the gate, just add some more complexity to the day. Could not agree more, sir. Kyle Klein, that's a nice birdie putt from the youngster. He don't leave too many of those laying around. He's he solid on the green. Is that the, the reigning rookie of the year, I want to say? I believe so. I mean, yeah. he was well earned and well deserved. Yeah. Kid's got a tremendous game and a great attitude. Sexton coming back for par. And he makes good there. And that is a drop in par for one Joel Freeman. And your chase card will head to two. Speaking of a man who has birdied the first two is Simon Lazad as he tees on three. Well, three is going to be playing kind of tricky today with all that wind coming off the left. And that's going to be very favorable for Simon is Lazad. That why well that leaked inside, over there? yeah, well inside circle one. Here he is on the green, just a tap in, turkey start for Simon Lazat. Hey, you love to see that's that. Going to bump him up into third place. He's at 18 under. Hey, might just be Rick putting pressure. Hey, I mentioned it, Ricky or Simon. Yeah. I mean, Kyle, yeah. I mean, they've all got games. Sexton, I mean, there's no slackers out here up on these top three, four cards. No doubt. All of these guys can strike, so don't get complacent. Don't get lazy. You can't get all caught up in too much of anything. You just got to keep playing your game. And these guys at the top, they're, you know, very accustomed to that. They're not afraid of anybody. It's just a matter of where's their game going to be once they step on that tee pad. There's a lot of good starts out here, except for one Eagle McMahon. Yeah, that was a big blow up Ooh. on hole one. I heard he missed the mandatory. And Twice? It looks like it. That's a six for Eagle to start his day. Followed it up with two birdies. Yeah, trying to recover quickly. But ugh, that's three strokes. Start. Yeah, that's you not the start. Yeah, not a, you know, that's brutal. Yeah. Especially on a hole like number one. It's just not one of those holes you anticipate taking a big number. Yeah, it's not at all. Ricky Wysocki takes the tee of two. This looks nice. Clean living for Ricky Wysocki. He's going to like that when he walks up the fairway. Yeah. Have the option to go over the parking lot, or I think he's going to go over the parking lot, throw a little with, flick. With his side arm? Yeah, yeah, he's way over to the left side. That went really straight. There's oh, no reason point. to throw the hyzer. Kyle Klein. This has been trouble. I was going to say the same, Ian. You know, this, yeah. this shot has not been the most rewarding this tournament, but that looks really good for Kyle, Kyle Klein. It. He's going to be perfect on the right side of the fairway. You can see him throw the putter or the mid-range. Nice yeah, well, little 200-foot layup. There's Cynthia Ricciotti hanging out with Kyle Klein. Nate Sexton. Went roller. It rolled OB. Looks like we got a game plan change to a forehand with an X-Cal. 
That's a couple alterations to the game plan early yeah. here for Nate Sexton. He had thrown the sidearm off a hole number one, went to the roller. When OB opts to go sidearm, that's a nice position on the right side of the fairway. He'll have a nice look down the chute to the basket. Joel Freeman up next. Like Joel's got his champion glow destroyer. Oh yeah. Wow. That was crushed. Perfect shot. Making look, Ricky look pedestrian right there. <laughs> the action is hot early when we come back. Your league card. Tackle front throw. to the tee, I have these game plans. I know where I want to land. I know the distance to the basket from those positions. I think I'm going to land in these same areas every single time, but you never know. I know how far I am. I know the height now. Having the Bushnell rangefinder, no matter where I land, gives me that extra level of confidence. Fair, we don't carry any food that's bad for you. So you could shop here blindfolded, knowing that everything is 100% clean and good for you. In fact, we carefully select everything in the store as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Me and my brother and my dad were out there for hours just playing disc golf, having fun. That's like one of the first things we usually say, it's a great family sport. We got to do it as a family. And it builds relationship. Like, I know my dad so much better because of disc golf. It's nice that that's something that we can connect and go do together. My parents are 100% behind it. Bad rounds, good rounds, doesn't matter. They always have a smile on their face. We don't call it sacrifice. We call it fun. Get out there and have fun. At the end of the day, most important is have fun. He's taken down two of these United States Disc Golf Championships over in 2015. Snagging the first. We saw a lot of that, lot of that 2015. Mm -hmm. That was the year he just went ham. One of the greatest years in disc golf history. And then coming back in 2018. Seems like every three years, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. We're on pace. Like he's on pace right now. He's in the driver's seat. He's got one round to go. Try to go three wins here out at Winter Cold. Uh, he joined that elite group of just a few other guys that have been able to win multiples and then three. Yeah, he, he wants to be in that 
you know, category for sure. That's what he lives for. He's on the box, in the house. All change in one hold uh, out of Winthrop Pilo. He's going to need a really solid performance today. Can't let any of those silly mental errors happen. He's got to try to mitigate any kind of unfortunate breaks and rollaways and just try to play as sharp and consistent as possible. Just inside of the left, Mando looking really nice by him. Solid was going to be right around that same distance. Waisaki made his putt from just inside circle one, back edge. Mm -hmm. Comfortable mm -hmm. putt to get things rolling for Macbeth. Yeah, right. Please welcome Chris Dickerson. Defending champion takes the tee, Chris Dickerson. It's going to be a loud day, Ian. Yes, sir. The gallery is out in force today. Counted at least 17,000 people. You'll love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> PA3 coming from Dickerson. And leaves it just low. 55 footer coming his way. Drew Gibson stepping up next. Drew reaching for a jokery off the tee. Overstable approach disc. Got stable a little early, but a good trickle. And fought through that nicely. That give him an opportunity to make an opening hole birdie. Could have gone either way. Able to get to the other side. Right now, Martin Hendel takes the tee of one. Martin will be throwing a San Marino Star EVR. Wow, he used every inch of that fairway, Ian. He is on the dance floor. He's going to have a birdie. What a shot by Hendel. And uh, Terry Miller is on the ground with Rock Hill Mayor John Geddes. Uh, throw it over to Terry Miller for a quick interview with John. And joining us now is our co-founder of Innova Champion Dis in Harold Duvall, along with the mayor of Rock Hill in John Geddes. And gentlemen, we're here on this amazing facility for one of the biggest events in the world. But disc golf development continues, and John, I know you've been part of the Sports Commission, yes. along with doing sports tourism, and somehow we're gonna grow disc golf even more in Rock Hill, is that the plan? Well, who else could do it but Rock Hill, right? I mean, this is the story of our community. When you have good, like-minded people who wanna see big things happen, you come to Rock Hill, and Innova is just a testament to just how successful we've been in Rock Hill for so long. And now, of course, Winthrop being host here in Rock Hill, Harold, what are some of the things that players, Fans, spectators, everybody could look forward to in this development. What are some of the components to it? Well, competition has been, you know, championship competition here at Winthrop for 25 years, first with the Worlds, and then 23 years now, the United States Disc Golf Championship and the Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championship this year. And we're going to use all that success and our partnership with the city to draw even more competitions. The uh, new facilities will hopefully host the National Collegiate Disc Golf Championship and the U.S. Doubles Disc Golf Championship. So we're, all this success we've enjoyed, we're trying to build on that and make it even more successful in the years to come. Well, and speaking to that success, we've seen the Velodrome, we've seen other developments here, Carolina Panthers mm -hmm. working on a practice facility here. 
what is it your tie? How do you want to bring these people here? Uh, what are you trying to achieve by bringing more spectators and fans and athletes? Well, in Rock Hill, we, we like to play. I mean, that's what it all boils down to, is just being able to be around our friends, family, and others that come to our community. Just enjoy yourselves. Sit back and watch some world-class athletes do what they do. Enjoy it and hopefully raise up more of our children to compete on a national and a world stage. That's, that's our story as a community, and that's what we continue to look forward to with disc golf and so many other things. Well, right here in Rock Hill, we're looking forward to Disc Golf USA. John, Harold, thank you guys very much. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Terry. Sure thing. Thanks. Thanks to Terry. And catching up with Harold and John and Paul Macbeth catching up with a two-stroke lead after that birdie putt. Absolutely statement putt for Macbeth. He's ready to play. Fortunately, Drew Gibson did not cash in on the opportunity after the good break. This is his putt for par. And not a great-looking effort from Drew on that birdie birdie bid. Hope we can clean up some early nerves. Make this comebacker. Uh, one half an inch from being in. It's it's tough to putt in the wind, man. It's it's a bit breezy out there. That was a downhill putt. You know, he's got the wind blowing in his face and against the grain of the basket a little bit. And, you know, it makes you overthink a little bit. It's hard to put the disc up there and trust it's going to drop. Yep. You know, unless you jam it in there real hard like Ricky Wysocki and just, you know, take all the elevation out of play and just beeline the thing. Speaking of Ricky, he has one of my favorite windy day quotes ever. What's that? Stupid air. Stupid air, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've sworn at the air once or twice. Martin Hendel with a solid opening hole birdie. Yeah. I swear that guy used every inch off that tee pad to get onto the dance floor. Solid job from Martin. And Simon had the great start, but after a bad drive on four, now has this left. Oh. oh. That's got to make the Mando, and it doesn't, oh. so he's going to be in a pinched off place trying to throw a fourth shot. So he's now throwing four. Still make, has to make the Mando. Well, that's hard to do. You won't see many people pull that off. That was wild. That's incredibly hard. It's like a, that was a jump putt Annie around the corner, 160 feet. Yeah, that's not easy, man. The man is a disc wizard. This guy also in that conversation. Ricky Waisaki on hole two, putting for birdie. Uh oh, that's three for three. Let's go, Rick. Setting the tone early, Ricky Waisaki. He is not going to quit. We all know there is no quitting that man. He's going to fight until the last hole. There's so many things that can happen out here on any one of these shots. So he's just going to keep on battling, grinding his way through and see where things end up at the end of this round. He'd be ecstatic to walk out of here with the USDGC championship under his resume. You know what I'm saying? He wants that bad. This is right major, in his backyard. Right in his backyard. He hasn't got it yet. He's, been, he's tasted it. It's been so close. Second a couple of times, I want to say at least once. I think it's a forehand friendly course. Rick's got that amazing forehand. The putting game, that's really what's sure. setting you apart from the field. We saw it yesterday with Paul. Absolutely. That's where it all happened on the putting green. He gave himself a lot of opportunities, good looks, and he made good on a high percentage of them. Right around 90% on the putting green from circle one, so that means he missed one, I guess, yeah, of sure. all the opportunities. And then, you know, cashing in on half of those circle twos, and most of them were off the band or off the chains or looked like they were going in, so. Must have figured something out. Like you said, he had a little mental tweak he had to make, and I figured that's what it was. It's never anything physical. It's always between the years. You've got all those Putting. skills and capabilities, anything when yeah. it comes to I me. Mean, yeah, if you're, like, really sore and hurting, then he's going to say, I'm physically hurt. Yeah. But he never said anything like that. He seemed healthy all year. He hasn't seemed to have any anything holding him back. You know, all these misses and missed opportunities, if you want to call it that. It's just it's all in between the years. I believe they're waiting for some people to tee on 17. We'll, slowly, we'll show you that right now. Nice looking forehand. Yeah. Swing it wide over into Kenny's ear load. That was a nice little back spin. On the inside circle one. Smashing that B button. Good stuff. Yeah. Is Austin? I don't. I don't think so. Oh, 
that's high and early. <laughs> He's gonna have to hustle to get in safe. Just does. Wow, piercing the earlobe. Yeah, there. man. <laughs> Cutting it as close as you can and landing safe. That was a really, kale. Was kale, was it? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so either. He, that man doesn't really throw <laughs> throw four hands. We are back to our league card action now that 17 is clear. This is Paul McBeth on hole two. He's watching that. He's dragged it over to the right side. That might be that same look we saw Martin Hendel had the other mm -hmm. day, kind of in that bush over there. That'll be tough to get up and down for a birdie. Getting word from Perk. There's a pretty strong left to right on this one. Yep, sure is. It's going to be blowing from the far corner of the campus across us on an angle. Martin Hendel. Coming with his rake, and he's, he's up there. It's not bad. Not a little bit short, but he'll have some options. He can decide to get aggressive and go for it or lay it up. Chris Dickerson. Has been an FX2 shot. Looks like he's staying with that. Fairway driver. That's overturned. There's some room out there if it flexes. Uh, That's not bad. That's actually not bad. He's off of the bush. He's going to be okay with the airspace in front of him. Cool. He'll be fine from there. Drew Gibson. That's going to be a hatchet from Drew. Going roller despite the wind. That's got to hurry. He went OB yesterday. Oh, that's going to work out real nice for Drew. That's safe. Way up the fairway, Ian. That arm talent it is something else. And Rick, three for three. Can he make it four for four? Let's check out the drive. Oh, this is Sorry, this is three for three. three. Yep. Excuse me. He's firing that thing down the right side over stable, trying to hook that thing up. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Here is that putt for birdie. And apologies on the spoiler, but that's a three for three start for Ricky Wysocki. Not only he, but Kyle Klein right there with him. Three for three. He's at 19 under early. Just one off Rick, huh? One off Rick. So it's going to be an interesting day already. They're starting to put the heater on the lead card right off the bat. It always is at this place, and it's, it's never over until 17 sings. It Eight. doesn't have to come down to 17. It could happen 10, 11, 12, 13. We are on hole four, Ricky Wysocki. I like this, Ian. Cut through there. That's okay. Did you see how he's there right there? He's, he's okay. He got through. He's on the good side, right? Even if he was right there on the edge, he's still going to be okay. He can straddle out, do his little sidearm, no problem. We saw Nate do it yesterday. Yep. Macbeth back on the fairway of hole two. You got a range guess on this one, Philo? He's way back there. Call it 400? At least. Low tunnel. Long carry for Macbeth. It looks like he's got all of it. That's why he's the McBeast. My goodness. Must help having Steph Curry on the bag. Some really good stuff early from McBeth. Yep. Thought he was out of position, and that was really pushing the limit there for most players. That was like a little half, 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 half court shot right there. <laughs> no doubt. He wasn't even halfway out the, you know, the first part of the fairway. And look at the shape of that shot. Late over stable skip. He is in the circle. Opportunity to go two for two. Dickerson. See, told you it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Same, a little bit it of is. a low ceiling, but he's going to have some space right after that tree in front of him to get the disc up and carry. Solid effort from Chris Dickerson. He's going to be in between circles, though. I don't think he quite made it up to circle one. I'm with you. Popping back over to Ford to check out Ricky Wysocki's second. Prime position for Rick, licking his chops. Man, this is, you can't put it in a better spot. 
Have Excellent. someone believe yeah. you. There you go. That's can't find a better spot than right there on the green either. That's going to be a tap in birdie for Rick. That's going to be four for four, putting him two back of Paul Macbeth with a make. Mm. Here we go, man. USDGC things, Philo. Strokes flying all over the place out here. Hope everybody at home has got a bunch of snacks and drinks close <laughs> by. You're not going to want to get up. We're not taking many commercials today. We haven't really all week, have I we? Think, yeah, just, it's like one or two a one day. One or two, yeah, yeah. man. So yeah. keep them close by. Action's going to be a plentiful. Martin Hendel, a really nice drive from Martin. Can he take advantage? Martin currently sitting five off of the lead. Full rip from Martin Hendel. Really good stuff. That's well inside circle one. I'm not surprised, but I'm impressed yeah, that's by the play of a Martin Hendel this week. Great way to put it. Over to four for Joel Freeman. Oh, count that one. Nice birdie, Joel. The par on one, but getting started after that. He certainly has three in a row for Joel Freeman and hole number four. We're missing your rock, Searle. All these birdies flying all over the place today, and you're not here. You're taking a lot of pictures this I weekend. I know. He certainly would have. There's a bunch of them right here in these first three cards. Almost everybody's got it. <laughs> How many years has Rock been out here taking those picks? Well, probably longer than I've been coming here. Yeah. I imagine cool. so. He's been a part of the community at least twice as long as I have. That's awesome. Probably longer. You are looking at Drew Gibson. Second shot on hole two after that incredible roller drive. He's going to finish right, but a very makeable putt. Drew looking to get going after the bogey on one. Needs to start fighting back in a hurry. He's already dropped down to seventh place early. Here he's only on hole two and already being outplayed by guys on the second card. Matty O on hole five with the water carry. A full extension and follow through with Matty O pushing towards the back high side. That's going to be a par putt coming from Matty O. All right. This is a birdie putt for the two time. Ricky Wysocki. Never a doubt. The only thing bad that ever happens to him is it jumps out every once in a while. I was worried every about time, it. yeah, it's in the basket. Does it stay in the basket? That's another story. Chris Dickerson up ahead on two. Long birdie bid out here in circle two. Unfortunately, Chris Dickerson will start off par par. Not Checking cool. the breeze, yeah. wondering if the wind dropped that. His intentions seem to be good. Unfortunately, not being able to creep over the rim. Paul Macbeth, this is so close. Gotta count this, too close to miss. go to the two start. Oh, he's giving himself a little breathing room from Chris Dickerson who's on his card. He does not know what's probably going on with Ricky yet. I'm sure he's not going to look for a little while. That's if his caddy's keeping keep you know close eye on what's happening and giving him updates but Drew Gibson needs to get going here. Birdie look on hole two. Over the rim, makes good. Nice recovery. Yeah. Erase the mistake from hole number one. Got a clean slate to work with for 16 holes. Yeah. Let's see if Martin Hendel can start two for two. Got a little movement in the crowd, waiting for them to settle for Martin. does smash his spin putts very solid from inside circle one and just outside that's kind of his sweet zone right around 35 feet and in he doesn't leave too much laying around 
Martin Hendel, two for two to start. Got to be impressed. Jumped right back up into fourth place. He's 19 under. Eagle We're gonna slide it over to hole five. Eagle McMahon with another. No, oh. he has. Does he know that it jumped out on him? Oh, he just oh, found out. My goodness. What the? Yeah, that'll make you want to throw things in the water. Mm. Especially Brutal. after carding a six on one. You would, he is you about would. to be on a roll. Mm -hmm. mm. They work most of the time. Yeah, those are the stories that happened at Winthrop Gold Arena. It's just one of those types of courses. Unfortunately, sometimes the basket doesn't want to catch a good putt. That can happen on any basket, honestly. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've seen we it all, see it all season. Year. Yeah, just yeah. you never know. We play on so many different targets, but I mean, they're all susceptible to having those types of things happen. And Eagle turns his back on it and goes to collect his disc and oh. doing what the grasshopper is doing. Like, can you believe it? Let me scratch my <laughs> antenna. It looks like Paul Macbeth was able to nab that birdie on hole four. I should push him to four under. Oh, he parred it, Philo. No. Yep. He That's missed. Yep. Yeah. And there is your lead card as they walk to five. Oh, welcome to the booth for We Are Sorry. <laughs> we had an internet outage in Milwaukee where our show gets pushed out from. Thankfully, it looks like it's fixed. We're back at it. Hopefully, it's, it stays that way, Philo. Fingers crossed, everybody. We have no control over that. We're just talking, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Not> exactly. <our fault. laughs> I was like, should I be shutting down my laptop? Like, what's going on? Is there too many people out here? And they're like, no, it's in Milwaukee. All right, cool. So we apologize, everybody. We'll hopefully get the ship righted here and bring you the rest of this round I hope uninterrupted. So, yeah, at least it was early, not late, right? No doubt. Yeah. So could you I, imagine if it was whole 17 oh, and there's like three guys tied oh, and then it did. Please, <laughs> please, please, no, please, no, don't put that out there. But no. we are very sorry and it looks like we're good to go now. So we'll back to the disc golf action here. You guys can look at disc golf instead of us here shortly. There we go. While you guys were away, uh, Ricky Wysocki did go par birdie after that four for four. So he missed that circle two putt on five. He did. We saw his shot come across the water. He had that circle two putt, wasn't able to convert, but did find himself in birdie contention on six and capitalized from birdie circle one, excuse me. Five feet. And that's a birdie on seven from five feet again. Six down through seven holes. Ricky Wysocki making moves and right behind him, the young Kyle Klein out of Michigan. Rick, Ooh. just two off the lead now. Just two after, back. After Paul takes that par He's on hole four. He's got a few holes out in front of Macbeth, so he can't, you know, Macbeth's probably not right. stressing out just yet. He's got an opportunity to answer and push his lead up or keep it the same. I don't know, does Paul check you this during the round, I wonder? I'm sure he's got his caddy taking a peek for him every once in a while. I don't think he needs to pull the phone out. And there you go. I think a lot of guys are starting to feel that looks kind of silly to be doing it often. <laughs> Paul Macbeth, this should be a force forehand. Got to keep your focus on what's happening in front of you, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's it's not the best shot for Macbeth. A little bit up on the high side. Get to go say hey to some folks at the gallery, I guess. <laughs> Shake hands, kiss some babies. Yeah, we'll see. Drew Gibson. I believe we'll see a buzz coming from Drew Gibson. So pretty. Clean living from Drew Gibson and found himself center of the fairway, well over the ridge. Chris Dickerson stepping up next. That's an M3 for Chris Dickerson. Chris won over on the round today. Not the start he needed. Can he clean it up on five? He's off to a good start, safely out in the fairway. That'll be in the middle. Mm -hmm. And Martin Hendel will step up next. Martin going with a Glow T-Bird Plus. Uh, 
that's got to hurry up. There we go. That had the right angle. Okay. I was worried Good about it. Yeah. yeah, just for a split second. Sometimes with that wind blowing from your right to left towards the water, it can really hook up in a hurry. Yeah. Martin Hendel shapes it solidly as normal and finds himself perfectly in the fairway. And let's take a quick fly over, shall we? One of the more iconic holes out here at the Winthrop Arena, hole number five. Long, long, 1,025 feet. Get over that water to that basket. You can see it out there from the tee pad, and you got to put together three wonderful shots. You can get away with a little bit of a sloppy one on the first one, I'd say. There's a bunch of land out here over this ridge to, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be anywhere in specific per se, you know, but that second shot so important to get yourself past this big tree here up on the middle of the fairway. Anywhere past that, you're inside around that 400-foot range. You know, you cruise past that 50 feet, and you know you're about 400 feet or less across the water. Really want to make sure you set yourself up for the appropriate angle because the further up, if you're the righty player, if you really push towards the corner, that angle gets really tricky. And there's some bushes down there towards the low end of this fairway that can make things, you know, more difficult than you need it to be. So obviously, if you got the sidearm play, you can push it a little further up. But that angle to cross is so important. And with that wind blowing off the right today, you got to really keep in mind of that OB deep does come into play and also you know just the wind pushing the disc down in general so there's a lot of things to take into account out here today on hole number five yes sir seen quite a few errant shots getting pushed around in that headwind Macbeth throwing two on hole five not the ideal position to be thrown from oh, right wow. up there on the tree I told you just slightly out of position now he's weighing out the options which is always smart he knows the sidearm is the safer play So close to that tree, and that wasn't the best. He's man. gonna have to play this one for par, I would think, from there. What do you think? That's a long way to cross for a Macbeth, even. Brings in a lot of extra things that could happen if he gets greedy and tries to do too much and misses. Right. Oof. So par would be the smart thing. Dickerson throwing two. Getting word from Nathan, Nate Perkins, 525 to the pin for Paul. That's a long carry. That sure is. Talk about pressure. Ooh. Chris going back to the M3 for his second. That straight mid-range just standing up perfectly. Perfectly for Chris Dickerson. He's going to have a great angle to cross. Nice on the flat side of the fairway. Martin Handel would like to land in that same vicinity. Missing to the correct side, away from the water. Nice little neural back, a little shorter of Chris Dickerson, but Martin Hendel has plenty of speed to make the crossing. Yes, he does. Chris Dickerson, 360 to the pin from where he ended up. Yeah, that's perfect. That's right in the ideal spot. That's in a comfortable zone for all of us, you know, touring pros, 360 is just a full, you know, fully committed swing. Doesn't mean you're going full blast, but just a nice sharp swing and under control, good shape, should have no problem. Drew Gibson. Getting ready for his second. A little bit of deliberation with the caddy there, making a choice on where's a good spot to land, where to aim. Decision made, and here we go, Drew Gibson. Drew just going jokery for his second. Oh no, that's a big unforced error. He can't believe it himself. Thought he had plenty of land to work with, but that wind is blowing from that right side, and it's going to pick up the speed and add some finish to the disc. And and most of the time when you see guys take that shot up and over the road, they really push it out there extra wide, yeah. even past the road and extra high and just 
That's a dangerous shot out here today. Macbeth, 525 to the pin. Looks like he's just laying up. He's now it's playing this for par. High right again. Man, that's, again, kind of out of position. And he, he's got plenty of action to get across. Man. Right, but you just would think you'd see a better quality shot and instead of drifting up to the right, just throwing it right down the middle. But that's that is what it is. 200-foot layup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. We are going to swing over to Eagle McMahon over on hole eight. This looks like a grenade coming. His third shot on hole eight, trying to salvage a par. <laughs> <laughs> the cheat code. The grenade. That's pretty awesome. That was real cool. Was there like three or four guys that really utilized that shot well? Kevin Jones, Eagle McMahon. I can't even come up with a third. You know, uh, Mr. Felbear used to use him back in the day. Did he really? I think his arm's falling apart now, so. Yeah. No, he's still got a tremendous amount of game, Phil Bird. <laughs> just, I'm just teasing the fellow. He knows I love him to death. Martin is grabbing range, but thanks to Nate Perkins, I know this is 375 for Martin. That's in his wheelhouse. Yeah. Drifting a little bit too much off to the right. He's going to be out there in circle two land. Martin Hendel, nice shot to get across in the safe land, but not quite aggressive enough to give himself a relatively makeable birdie putt. Yeah. And here we get a look at Winthrop Blake in our gallery and our lead card as they make their way down the fairway. Chris Dickerson, a chance to grab a stroke on Paul. Needs a good shot here. He slid down to fifth place now. Happens fast at Winthrop. 360 to the pin for Dickerson. That looks low. It's going to need to hustle in. Wow. Can you believe that for Chris Dickerson? Living on the edge, my man. You're safe. You got an opportunity. You make some putts from out there. Maybe sure. this will get him going, huh? He sure does. Sitting at one over on the round. We just saw his scorecard pop up. Slow start for the defending. Yeah, it's not look like, look like we expect out of Chris Dickerson. Yeah, usually his final rounds, he looks so sharp and focused. And today, just not quite the same Dickerson we're accustomed to seeing. Macbeth, on the other hand, has got an opportunity. Throwing four, trying to save par. That misfire of a second shot, trying to cross the water inside circle oh. one, does so nicely. That should be a par for Macbeth. Total redemption shot there. Big time. Absolutely needed a par on that hole. Keeping up to date on Ricky Wysocki. He is on the fairway of eight clean after one throw. We are now watching Drew Gibson throwing. Firebird over the water for Drew. Just push it a hair along back edge of the circle back towards the water will his putt be from just outside circle one. Over on the eighth, Kyle Klein. One of Kyle's DD3s. How do you like that, Ian? Love it, man. Prime position down there on the left side of the fairway. Option time, another sidearm similar to that if he wants to bust out the roller. Rick going to the overstable Halo Destroyer. I feel like we've seen more forehands in this hole than years past. Is Am I imagining things? or? I just think it's more conducive to that play, the shape of the hole, the grade of the land, all that stuff. It's just, you know, the, all the airspace out there to the left, and you can see how the grade of that slope is filtering towards that OB down yeah. on the low side, and that's a way faster skip than it is skipping up to the high right side. 
I think it's just a smarter play. It's, and also, I think the angle that you want to play from is kind of on that high right side. So if oh, you can sure. finish on the high right side, then you have a better angle and a better ceiling to throw through than if you were on the left. Joel Freeman. Star Destroyer coming from Joel. We all know how hard it is to throw the disc on a perfectly straight line and for it to go like from your hand, you know, 350 feet on the same line that it started. And that's pretty much what you would need for the righty backhand play on number eight is to throw something extremely straight and for it to never fade. It's a tall order on hold. Yeah, Drew's eight. throwing buzz on that one. It's a smart call. Yeah. Chris Dickerson, outside circle two for birdie. They just haven't been going in for him. No. It's a great effort, though. It was a solid effort. Martin Hendel, also in circle two. Birdie bid. action out the gate unfortunately does not turn in towards the change quickly enough and he is going to settle for a par Martin Hendel one under par for his round so far dropped a couple of spots down to sixth place Drew Gibson birdie putt oh sorry par putt That's a good connected putt for Drew Gibson. Absolutely. Much improved on the putting green. He had a few slip through his fingers yesterday and early today so far, but that was a great connection, great way to salvage that par. A good scramble and pick Beth to do the same. Count that one. Yep, he's going to need all of them, unfortunately. He's going to be dropping one stroke to Ricky Wysocki through this same stretch of five holes, and that's cutting that deficit down to two, but Macbeth has got a couple of holes ahead of him that he can birdie and make up a couple of those strokes. Yes, sir. We've got to keep in mind Ricky's out in front of him a couple, so unless if they catch him. Hendel coming back for par. Martin sneaks it over the rim for the par make. Well done there, Chris Dickerson. Par save as well. Star par, huh? Yeah, for the lead card. We are swinging over to hole nine to check out a Matt Orem drive. It's got a nice shape. Does it have the right speed? It looks like he is inside circle one. Right. Roll tied to the Matty O fans out there. Back with Ricky Wysocki. <laughs> His second shot on hole eight. Firing the forehand down the God, alley. I like the shape of that. That should finish oh. towards the basket. We saw that roll go the opposite direction yesterday, and he had that awkward putt. That's right. Today he's going to have a real nice look at it. Kyle Klein trying to follow those vapor trails. That's got a drop. A little tight and high for Kyle Klein. That's a great guardian tree. It does a, a really good job. <laughs> great design right there. Mm -hmm. Of course, directors, of course, you know, doing their thing out there, tweaking the elements out there, making it as challenging as possible. Shouts to all the Duvals. Big time. And all their great work out here. You are looking at Paul McBeth on the tee of six. Trying to go on vacation here and head to the beach. And that looks a little straight. Not quite as good as the other day. He's going to be a green flag, but circle two putting. 
Living on the edge there, man. Yes. Any more that skipping, one. that would have been in the hazard into the drop zone. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing that man needs right now if he's trying to win this tournament. Well, like it was about a foot from an extra stroke on that shot. What do you think about these cool vans that they're rocking these days, man, with the cool alternative? Are they fresh, Dude, man? I need some of those, yeah. man. Yeah, I wish I was awesome. Wish I was cool enough to wear those. Sure you are. <laughs> Drew Gibson, what's he got going here? He is going with an eagle on hole six. That looks high. Yeah, and inside. He's asking for the tree to beat that down and save him from the stroke, oh, and he will not be no. rewarded. Unfortunately, that's sending him to the drop zone. And a very scary putt for par. And that wind still blown from the player's right side, so you really got to take that into account, even with those two skinny trees right off the side of the tee pad, kind of making this fairway extremely narrow for the distance. Try to shape the disc with a little bit of an overstable edge and just trust the disc will swing back on its own. Chris Dickerson from the drone. Looking good. That was cool. And that was really cool from Dickerson. There we go. That'll get him back to level par for the round. And a stroke on Paul, most likely. Yep. Back into that tie for fourth with Joel Freeman at 21 under. Martin Hendel. Martin will be throwing a champion Thunderbird. I got enough, Philo? Doesn't look like it, man. Wow. He jumped over the corner and <laughs> saved. That was whoo, so close to going all wrong for Martin, but he's going to have a tap in, Birdie. You'll love to see it. This is Joel's second over on hole eight. Flexing that Firebird over there. Will it work? Oh, oh yes. my. No, no extra oh. rolls. No extra rolls. Oh. Oh, that's not what he needed right there. Gosh, that's so punishing. God. Just when you thought you'd done it all right, huh? Such some really important 15, 20 feet right there. Hole nine, Eagle McMahon. That's a balk. We won't call him on that. Yeah, there's no balks. You just all <laughs> holding foot faults, right? There you go, buddy. Eagle going to that wide hyzer. FD3. Very should help push it back. Oh, tickles the chains. Look at him. The green flag. There. That's a good result. Absolutely. So hard to be aggressive on that. And back up to back, excuse me, back to hole eight. Joel Freeman. Oh. Don't roll. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That would have been terrible to see a double roll away at this stage. Playing a really solid tournament, Joel Freeman. Five down through eight. It's a good number. Yes, it is. Trying to make a charge up the board. We are going to show you a Ricky Wysocki putt on hole eight. There he is, Ricky Wysocki, the charge continues. A man on a mission. This place is going to blow up, man, if this guy takes us down. Hometown hero? Big time. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of getting uh, Calvin Heimberg, Chris Dickerson vibes and watching uh, Ricky try to chase, chase down Paul from a yeah, different card. Yeah, not have to worry about the monsoon, just a little bit of wind. Uh, yeah. Drew Gibson from the drop zone attempting to save par. Two for two, Drew Gibson, jumpers. Get back it, Back Drew. holes. Heck yeah. That's a nice little momentum shift for Drew Gibson. Definitely. One he can hopefully build upon. Paul Macbeth. A birdie putt if he wants it. I wouldn't blame him laying up for par. I don't think he would have taken this long if he was laying up. He would have done checked that under the basket, conceded the hole. Agreed, sir. He knows he needs it. He must have his caddy in his ear letting him know Rick's coming, man. He's right behind you. One stroke. Ah. Good effort. You missed in the right place. Yep. Front cage is where you want to miss on a dangerous putt like that. Give it a chance. Try to test the ceiling as much as you can, but know that if it doesn't go in, it's not going past. And Martin Hendel, what a drive from this man, cutting the corner onto the beach. Yes, sir. Martin Hendel, we told you, man. He's, I told you anyway. He's a scrappy yeah, player. Yeah. He's solid. 
has nothing there. flashy about him. You know, he's not going to wow you, but he's just going to keep on putting those solid shots down the fairway, giving himself opportunities. He makes good on a high percentage of putts. Exactly. He knows how to battle. As Paul with the par. Chris Dickerson with the birdie. Over to Ricky Wysocki on hole nine we go. He is ratcheting up the pressure on one Paul Macbeth. Such an important drive here. He doesn't like it. That looks like a slip off the tee. Is it oh, in? that is not. That's a red flag. Oh, man. it's inches. On, man. That's inches intense. from being in bounds. That is oh, brutal. What a brutal break for Wysocki mm -hmm. right there. I know. He's starting to make the charge. He was starting to do what Calvin did last yeah, year, exactly. right around the same stretch of holes, and the exactly. leader started to fall off the pace. And yeah. Mm. Oh, he's making a charge. Once again, we are really sorry for earlier losing the internet, but we are back. We got disc golf for you now. So Hopefully. Yeah. No other Hopefully it keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it right. You can blame Spectrum in Milwaukee if you want to blame somebody. Yeah, write them letters. Yeah, right. Don't call us. <laughs> Especially not me or you. Yeah, don't call us. <laughs> back to the action on hole nine with Kyle Klein. All my fans. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That that's that's really my favorite thing good. you say, dude. <laughs> it's my that's my iconic Philo phrase. Yeah, look at that gallery, man. Wow. I told you it's starting to build. They got whole seven surrounded. They're not going anywhere. This is fun. Let's ring up an ace in front of that gallery. That would be awesome. Maybe Drew can do it two times. Good point. He's right there. Wonder if he's still got that same buzz in the bag. Oh, you know it. That orange one. I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll see it. And it is the easiest hole, softest of the day. Surprise, surprise. Triple Mando giving up over 50% birdies on the day. Only 14% of the field missing the structure or not staying safe. That's a pretty low number. Sounds like the guys are starting to figure it out here on number seven. We'll see what our lead card will do. Tackling the Triple Mando, hole number seven. Welcome, Mike. Chris Dickerson, teeing from the drone cam. Oh, he finds the guardian. It's all right. That's a good place to miss. Still gives him a chance to make the putt. Martin Endel stepping up. The 10-time Casey Pro Rock. Another one of the many gems in Martin's bag. It's a great line if it drops. Oh. Uh, he's trying to ride the win and Anticipate a bit of a drop, doesn't happen, hits squarely, I mean, dead on line with the basket. If that thing gets any bit of a drop, that's hunting chains. I thought he had a chance. Macbeth. Started off three for three, sets three pars, really needs this stroke now. Ooh, beast love there to tap the inside and that could have easily been a couple of inches the other way in a very awkward stance and a very awkward putt. Yeah. Beth has an outside chance to knock it a birdie here at hole number seven. Rick an inch the wrong way, Paul an inch the right way. Drew Gibson and his buzz, can he repeat the feat? Ooh, giving it a stab, it looks a little hot. <laughs> he is gonna be safe. There's some land back there. Yeah. We're looking for the green string. That was the and circle earlier one. To today, we have Anthony Barella on hole seven. Ring it up, A.B. Sick. That was a no doubter. Dead center chains for AB. AB having kind of an AB day out there. A little bit of a roller coaster. Still, yep, yeah, that's that's what AB does. The man has one of the highest ceilings in the game. I'll tell you that when he's connecting, can throw every shot the best can. There's our lead card. Walking down to the bamboo structure on hole seven. We'll see some putts. Martin Hendel kicked off the top of the structure. So this is still a birdie putt, but a difficult one. Good. 
Harden handle. Highlight reel. That was awesome. Big putt. Oh, geez, good for one of those here and there. You know it, man. Solid stuff, Martin Handel. <laughs> Love that reaction. Good. Quickly finds himself back to three under par on the round. Yes, sir. Chris Dickerson for birdie. Needs every one of these he's going to look at today. At this stage, he certainly does. Currently sitting four back of Paul Macbeth. There's a little too much flex on that putt. Nothing doing from the big putts category for Chris Dickerson this yeah. week. All those big putts, or not big putts, but all the made putts to those first couple of rounds are all pretty, you know, mm -hmm. makeable, nothing too flashy. Yeah. As of late, just been kind of off the mark. at a Paul McBeth. Oh, we got Drew Gibson up first, it looks like. Yep, looks like Drew Gibson first. Birdie look for Drew, though. Trying to use the body English to make that one go in, but he will have to settle for par on hole seven. This man, no settle in him. Macbeth looking for a birdie. This is for a three stroke lead. Looked a little pushed right out the gate. Just broke the plane of the body just a smidge, and that's where the disc bounces off the chains. Unfortunately, Macbeth is going to scrape up his fourth par in a row. Kind of opening the door for Ricky again, isn't he? A little bit, although Rick, we saw him Made throw OB bogey, on yeah, nine. He's yeah. going to take the bogey, but, I mean, you know, he's still right there as far as birdie count, you know, as oh, far yeah. as the, the, between the two of them. Ricky's got seven. Paul's only got three. Mm-hmm. Dickerson coming back for par now. There you go, from Chris Dickerson. Not the score he needed on seven, but that's what he gets. Paul McBeth also for par. And we'll have a Drew Gibson drop in. Martin Hendel snacking a stroke on the lead card with a really nice putt. That Martin first to putt and the only one making the birdie. He big putted the entire league card. There you go. That's what he did. Martin Handel. Adding a little highlight reel clip for the end of his season. Yeah. Take another look at this Martin Handel putt. If you were wondering what he was talking about before, he was making sure he had his footwork squared to the mandatory. He couldn't progress and be more parallel. Mm. Does it perfectly right in the heart. That was awesome. He didn't make the Mando, but his disc did, which is the important part. Got to give it to Martin Handel, man. The guy's I love a great it, man. tournament so far. Yeah. 20 under par here on Championship Saturday. You got to be impressed with the guy. I Rick, am. Ricky Wysocki from the DZ on hole nine. Take a stab at it, coming up short. Should have come to rest safe and collect a bogey. Oh, Kyle Klein. leaving that one. Unfortunately, coming up short on the elevated basket. And over on 10, Ricky Wysocki running the eagle. Oh, he pulled that a little bit. Could that it's come back, Philo? It's got a hustle. No way. You got it. Inside circle one, Ricky Wysocki putting for Eagle. Oh boy. Big time opportunity right there. Oh He's going to have boy. an opportunity to 
Make this a tie ball game before Macbeth even finishes hole number eight. Potentially. Love it, man. Ooh, Love hey, here we this go. This battle we're getting. Told you, man. Get them snacks ready. Hope you got a nice ice chest of beers and drinks, whatever you like to do. <laughs> right there next to you on the couch or in your backyard. It's it's gonna be a battle. Go nowhere. Gosh, I wish they were on the same card, but it actually kinda makes it a little bit more fun. It's kinda a little more dynamic, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, back in the day you had no idea what was going on. You just had to go out there and shoot your number. There was no U disc. Also on hole ten is Joel Freeman. Looking schnazzy and looking for an eagle. Got a little greasy there on the tree. Let's see if he's got enough forward push. Looks like he does just inside the stake Ooh. line. Joel Freeman also looking at Eagle. He's six down today. He certainly is. He's putting together a very solid round. He is just three back of Paul right now. Six down through nine is like almost perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's a fantastic place to be any day, any round out here at USDGC. You get through that front nine, six down, it gives you some breathing room for the back nine because you know things get a little bit more difficult. Yes, sir. Intensity is going to pick up. The pressure is going to pick up. You got a little bit of a cushion to make it home. Or if you can keep on that heater, you know, you can add a few more to that. Oof, you're coming in looking real strong. We got a live look at Eagle McMahon on hole 11. This is his DD3. This should go a very long way. We saw what he did yesterday. He took it up and over the hollies, bent it in backside. Yeah. Let's see if he goes for that same play. It's a bit of a headwind today, and it's pushing a bit harder than it had been. Is that coming back, Philo? I kind of don't think it's going to. It's going to have to hurry. It Go. did. Green flag. There's a little space on the backside. Do you tag that tree up there, possibly, and kick it bounce? All right, so the tree is the end of the holly bush. That big tree that you guys yeah. see out there, that's the end of the line of the trees of the bush, right? So if he clips that and falls down, there's about a little 30-foot radius of land that he's still safe before a little cart path. Because as hard as Eagle throws, there's no way that's stopping inbounds <laughs> without a little aid. Well, we saw what happened the other day. I mean, the direction that it was turning didn't look good. Yeah, it didn't look great. Kyle Klein with an approach. Right on the edge of circle one. Going to have a little bit of a death putt. Is that Matty O? That is a layup from Matty O, playing it down to the bottom. Potentially see a roller out of Matty O from there. He's oh, yeah. super savvy with that play. Here it is, one more look at the leaderboard. It's just pretty much those guys around Martin Hendel. I think that's pretty much the, the cutoff for has, having a chance. I believe you, yeah. You know, I don't think Nate Sexton threw nine holes at you know, seven pace. You know, that's a lot of strokes, seven for nine holes. I just don't see it happening. You need a lot of people to crumble ahead of you, and there's too many good names up there to make that happen. It's kind of stinks to say it, too, because it's like you're rooting for people to play bad. Right. You know, I don't want to do that. Uh, this is an eagle putt for Joel Freeman, trying to go 8 through 10. Yeah. Joel Freeman, ladies and gentlemen. Big putt from Joel Freeman. That's going to jump him up to minus 24 on the round. One Excuse me, total. Off the pace, man. Eight under for the round. Making things interesting. Yes, sir. This chase card is chasing today. Martin Hendel. He is on the tee of eight. Martin going with a metal flake wraith here. Such great angle control from Martin. He and does. You, you talked about that OB left, you know? Yeah. Making sure it lands flat. Absolutely. That's a skill set, not just a, a disc choice. Mm -hmm. you, know, you really have to know how to shape the disc for flat so that it doesn't get an overstable finish. D1 forehand coming from Chris Dickerson. Smooth swing from Chris Dickerson. Finds himself in position in the middle of the fairway. Setting up that roller spot for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when people are trying to learn how to throw that shot and you know doing lessons in clinics and they're uh -huh. asking about that, I just try to explain it. It's a more narrow version of an Anheuser swing. Macbeth, that's Ooh. turned over. That's got a hustle. 
Oh, and what? Get out of here. How does he do that all the time? He flashed all five rings on that shot, Philo. All five of them. Hmm. Anybody else, that has no chance, right? <laughs> For sure, OB. <laughs> this guy, he gets the kicks off the stakes, off the spotters, off of the, you know, through the thick grass. <laughs> hmm. Buzz coming from Drew Gibson. Playing it off to the right there. His play is the roller for his second shot, so that's set up beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. Up on the high right side. Didn't try to bite off the whole distance, but plenty of angle and room to work with. Getting another, another look at this Paul McBeth. I thought he was toast when that thing came out of his hand. That <laughs> I was with you. <laughs> hard cranked over. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to land in that stick. He must have found a little dry spot in there, a little patch of mm -hmm. low-cut grass to bounce out because that stuff looks super thick, and usually that's the end of it when it hits that tall stuff. Paul McBeth escaping once again <laughs> from potential danger. All knotted up with Ricky Wysocki. He did convert the eagle. Kyle Klein, we'll show you that in just a second. Kyle Klein with a good putt. That's a birdie for Kyle Klein. Ruin the surprise, but if you're watching U-Disc, you already knew. It's all live and updated by the moment. Here is that eagle putt coming from Rick. With a make here, he is tied at the top. Ricky's never missing that putt. Not when it matters that much. Love to see that reaction, trying to get that crowd hyped up behind him, too. You see that little hand pump, like, let's go. Yeah, buddy. Uh-oh. Ricky Wysocki, Paul and Beth tied in first. Joel Freeman on the chase card is just one stroke off. We are back to the lead card for Chris Dickerson's F7 roller. Don't forget young Kyle Klein. He's also having a clean seven under through ten round. Thank you, sir. Don't, don't forget him. He's yeah, right there. He is. he is in the mix firmly. Dickerson, this looks really nice. Get over there. Keep hustling. Oh. He's in the circle, though, right? I think he's between circles, actually. Is he? Oh. Yeah, that tree is right on circle's edge, and I think he's behind that tree gotcha. with a little ivy towards the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the, the circle's edge right there. Can't hate that shot, though. No, you can't. He threw it really well. Good effort. We've got a Martin Hendel roller coming up. is down it's looking nice like cut in time doing the same thing dickerson's did unfortunately yeah. he's going to make contact with the gate you can see he's around that circle two range not ideal i believe we'll have a drew gibson shot next yep that is drew and he has his hatchet in his hands should see the backhand roller coming That's a good reaction after hitting that tree. Yeah. He'll find himself with a straight uphill putt inside circle one. Well done, Drew. I'm not sure he realizes what all happened, but I he's going to like it when he gets over there. <laughs> this is one of my favorite holes to watch out here at Winthrop. It's just so technical. It is, and this is a, an extremely technical shot for Mr. Macbeth. Kind of pinched off on the left side. The window is extremely narrow. He's going to have to put a nice flex on this and hook it around that big brown tree you see in the background, the whitest trunk. That's his play. Not bad. It's going to like that. That's great, man. <laughs> Fantastic. What a shot. That is a birdie opportunity after four straight pars for Paul McBeth. The field has chased him down. It happened. Ricky Wysocki tied for the lead. This man just won back over on hole 11.
Joel Freeman putting the boom on it, trying to get to the sweet spot. Did he do it, Philo? He's got the distance. Let's see if it doesn't hook out too much. Oh, yeah. Green oh. flag, Joel Freeman in prime time position. Just under 250 feet or so to get into the wow. green. It's not the longest uh, par four. It's only 734. Okay. And that's a good four and change, you know, almost 500 to where yeah. he's at. Yeah, Joel's got that in him yeah, for sure. For sure. He can carry the disc 500, but mm -hmm. sometimes the shape and throw you off. Yeah. Especially having to land in a small little zone, but Joel Freeman just posterized that drive on 11. Ricky Wysocki, Halo Destroyer. Your co leader. High towering flexing shot for Wysocki. That should have enough. Just not. No. Yeah, that's in the hazard. By feet. Wow. Couple of slip ups for Rick here in the middle. Yep. That drive on number eight, uh, nine looked like he slipped off the tee. And yeah. Maybe a little bit too much hang time on that drive. Not enough forward penetration. That's exactly what it was. I thought he was in for a split second. The stakes kind of had me confused. Yeah. Well, he still got an opportunity to save four, right? I mean, yeah. four on hole 11 is not a bad That's score. That's fine, right? Hendel, a circle two bid for birdie on hole eight. Marty currently five back of Paul and Ricky. Solid stab comes in a little low on the uphill putt. Martin Hendel's gonna settle for par. Not a bad score on hole number eight. There's definitely a few holes out here where you're thinking, if I get a par, that ain't the worst thing that could have yep. happened. And this is one of them. Seen some big numbers on this one. Dickerson for birdie. This would close Chris's gap to three. Everything but in. It was in for a while so even. Friendly. Yeah, Dickerson just not able to connect with any of these circle two putts. Most of his work's been inside circle one, but circle two has just not been his friend this week. Drew Gibson, I birdie look. Let's get Drew to 19 down on the round. Or on the event, excuse me. 19 down through seven holes. That'd be that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Drew can do it, right? <laughs> Good putt, Drew. Be able to convert. Hearing it from the gallery here. Bill Newman, PDGA. Out there, crowd control. Macbeth. For birdie on hole eight, and a stroke lead over Ricky Wysocki. Uh-oh. I didn't think he'd miss that one, Philo. I didn't think he'd be missing any of them, but he's yeah. now missed four in a row, and he's really opening the door for another competitor to overtake him. Mm -hmm. Kind of looking at Ricky and Paul's scores. Through eight, Paul three down, Ricky was eight. seven down <laughs> through eight. Correct. Yep. Correct. Martin Hendel with a par. Excuse me, that's five pars in a row for Macbeth. It is, isn't it? Yeah, hot start, but slowing down a little bit. And a hole nine's coming up, Philo. This one can go. Either way. Yep, a very binary hole. It is very much so a coin flip. I mean, you land safe, you more than likely are going to have a, a, a birdie two. Not guaranteed, but more than likely. It's yeah. not the biggest green. It's definitely not very deep as it is wide. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, anywhere near the basket, you're looking at 15, 20 feet. But, you know, if you don't land safe, it's almost automatic bogey because I don't think anybody's made it from the drop zone all week. Not that I've heard, no. I haven't heard any good stories from that drop zone. They really put it in a tough spot and 
that tricky low ceiling and on an elevated basket and not a lot of room behind. Just a lot of guys just don't want any part of that. I'm going to jump back with Ricky Wysocki on 11. He's got From it. hazard to hazard? You can't do that. Get safe. Ricky Wysocki Rick. is really making it tough. He now has that putt to save bogey. That's brutal. Just brutal. Oh, my goodness. Like, what was that upshot distance, Violet? What did you call it? 200 feet? 250? 240-ish, 250. I mean, it oh, wasn't yeah. the longest. I think he was on the short side of the hazard, right? So... 250, 260, just maybe mm. the wind got it, you know? Yeah. It wasn't very high out the gate. He could have brought it with a little bit more air under the disc, but that was kind of a low burner the whole time. We are on hole nine watching Drew Gibson. I'm getting told there's a decent headwind on hole nine. I'm not surprised. That's exactly the direction the wind's coming from, the far corner of the campus. This is a, a destroyer coming from Drew. Flag. That's, sp that's, that's Spike one. Heiser coming in handy, Philo. That Absolutely. power coming in real handy on hole nine. It's, most people, they can do one or the other, right? They can push it forward or they can push it high. But put both those together, that's a gear most of us don't have. Martin Hendel, he will be reaching for a T-bird on hole nine. Hearing some claps. Martin must be on the green nicely. Back to 11 we go for a Joel Freeman approach. That has the right shape. Ooh, that's Inside a chance. Circle one. Joel to grab two strokes on Rick right here. With Rick putting for bogey. Chris Dickerson back on hole nine. What would this win mean for a Joel Freeman, huh? Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Putting his stamp on the scene with a win there. Major at that. This is a tourney unlike many other. Dickerson keeping it lower, tighter. Couple of bounces in. Boom, green flag for Chris Dickerson. There we go. Trying to rally up some kind of a. He's got nine holes, right? Yep. Ten holes after, nine holes after this. Try to put some kind of charge on late, late rally. It's possible. He's only four back right now. Anything's possible. Macbeth on the tee of nine. Taking the wide gap. He looked down at his foot instantly. That is well short. There's that binary result we're talking about. He He's looked down as soon as he threw that disc, like his foot came out from under him. Yeah. He's kicking some dust off of the tee pad and frustration builds for Macbeth. Ricky Wysocki to save bogey on hole 11. Has yet to be in bounds on the hole. There's the first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to describe that. Has yet to be in a safe on the hole and still comes out with a bogey. You do not see that very often, ladies and gentlemen. And Joel Freeman. Joel Freeman, you can't miss that one, Joel. Oh, no. His body told the story of that putt. Yeah. Like his body and his arm went two complete different directions. They did, didn't they? Yeah, that cro those cross hill stances can do that to you sometimes. Is that what did it, you think? Sometimes. Freeman does grab a par, though, and that's still a stroke on Rick. They are now tied at 24 down, one back of Paul, but Paul's about to fall back to 24 as well. Oh, what a big opportunity missed for Joel Freeman right there. He'd be your outright leader at the moment. Could he, could wow. he connect with that putt on 11, but instead, Scrapes up a par, keeps things level with Wysocki. This is so exciting, Philo. This is great stuff. This is what we come out here to watch, and if you're paying for it at home, this is exactly what you're hoping to see. If you're a Paul McBeth fan, you might be a little nervous at the moment. <laughs> if you're Ricky Wysocki or Joel Freeman, you might be really excited at the moment. As they look at your leader for the time being, anyway, at the drop zone on hole nine, and nobody wants anything to do with this. Is he gonna? I don't think he has a choice but to take a stab at it. You, you know, really he's, think so? He's gotta try. This seems so early for a mild desperation play. I don't know. I don't know about desperation. Yeah. I think he's just gonna give it a soft bid. 
There's Obi so close to the basket, though. Most people have been trying this from the Anheuser side instead of the Heiser. Everything but in for Macbeth. What an incredibly courageous stab under the circumstances, trying to save a par. Unfortunately, he is going to drop a stroke into a three-way tie at the top. Martin Hendel, a birdie bid coming up for the Canadian. Let's move Martin to 21 down into a tie with Chris Dickerson for the time being. Oh, off the band, but thankfully nestles on the island. Martin will take a par on hole nine. That was a strong bid. It was a great bid. Nothing shy about that putt out of Marty. Nah. Gibson, the Spike Heiser stayed in bounds. Will he take advantage with a birdie putt? Uh, you got to make these, man. This stage of the game, there are no excuses for missing five paces from the target. This is a warm-up distance putt. Do these in your sleep. Got to catch all these. Dead center goes Drew for the birdie on hole nine. Good pick up there for Drew Gibson. Bump him into that sixth place conversation. He's now tied with Martin Hendel. Chris Dickerson for birdie. Let's move Chris, just three off the lead. <laughs> Got it. And now it'll be two off the lead once Paul taps in. This is getting tight. It's getting real interesting. We're going to get some, uh, some Jim Mora style playoffs going here later, buddy. Playoffs? <laughs> it's totally possible. I mean, who knows what can happen. Winthrop is so fickle. Any one of these holes from here on out could really cause havoc. A big number is possible on pretty much every hole minus, uh, I'd say, 14. Yeah. You know, 14, you're more than likely worst case is a four, maybe a five if you get a double roll away. But, I mean, the rest of the holes, double bogey can come into play in a heartbeat. So you got to really <laughs> see who's going to have the most focus and come around and try to get this ring, huh? Can't wait to see who does it. Well, there's a lot of other things at stake. I was just thinking about this, that top 10 mark. Those guys get an exemption if they haven't earned one already. So a guy like Nate Sexton or a Chris Dickerson and a Paul Macbeth don't have to worry about it because they're already previous champions and they've already got an automatic exemption. But for the rest of these guys, finishing in that top 10, so important. A uh, guy that's just right there on the bubble, Nico LaCastro putting together a charge. Look at minus that. nine through 13. A little, little thing going on down there. What's this guy got? Is that a, a diorama, Mike? What do you call those things? I got them. Looks like a little, a little model. A little model, a little project from school or something. That's too cool. <laughs> uh, functioning, too. Wow. Look at this guy. Dig it. Good stuff, young man. That kid's going to throw 500 feet in a couple of years. I hope so. <laughs> I'm excited to see all of these guys throw 500 feet. <laughs> they need to throw not quite 500 feet if they're taking the eagle line. What, what's the the distance, actual distance, if you run it straight at the pin. In the five and a quarter range, I believe, 530, somewhere around there the last time I Is checked it really? my Bushnell. Yeah, somewhere oh, wow. in that range. I think the front bubble of the uh, of the green is like 515 or something, 520. Oh, I thought it was, I was like over. It's only 549, you know, from tee to, tee to basket. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to the front edge of circle one is right where that OB line is. So, you're, you know, thinking 520, 515 to clear. Mm -hmm. That's a rip. Yeah. That's a rip. I mean, I I got it in me, but not every time. You know, it's like something I got to real feel real froggy for to get. You know, a lot of these guys have 515 in the bag all day, every day, on one angle at that. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to go full flex with my Falcon to get there. The Millennium, the millennium Falcon. My Millennium Falcon. I've seen you throw that thing real far. Oh, yeah. Those things fly nice. Oh, well, that's an old man disc. Back in the day, <laughs> I could throw my destroyers that far, but... Yeah, my, my arm might fall off if I try my destroy for 500 <laughs> feet. It's just a little too much disc. Are they kind of shrikey, turny kind of yeah, in there? Yeah, in that shrike realm, you know. Yeah. Got to destroy your top, I believe, or destroy your bottom shrike top. Okay, cool. Pretty glidey disc at speed, very neutral. I 
think they sold all out of them over at the village, but hop on over to Discs Unlimited. I think they got oh, cool. some there. Nice, man. We are looking at hole 10 and Drew Gibson. Drew Gibson going with a PD2 off the tee here. Oh, he's going for Eagle. Mm -hmm. He's one of your uh, your one angle clubs, although he did flex this he one. He flexed it, and that's not coming back fast enough. No, he will be headed to the drop zone. And you can kind of mm. start counting Drew out for the, the win, possibly. It's yeah, gonna take for the win after that, I mean, he's going to take par. He needs to be gaining strokes, not staying level. Yeah. Unless, again, unless if the field drops back to where he's at, which I don't really see that happening any more than it already has. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty much a wrap for Drew. That eagle definitely would have got him right back in the conversation. Oh, though. yeah. Chris Dickerson. Sticking, Chris is doing? sticking with the birdie route, it looks like. Smart play at this stage for Dickerson. Chris just two off the pace currently. Sitting in fifth place, one back of Kyle Klein. That'll do. That's a great shot from Dickerson. I like it right there. Got, you know, don't have to worry about the canopy of the trees. You can mm -hmm. see everything. Mm -hmm. So important out here to really see where you want the disc to fly. Martin Hendel is on the tee of 10. He's going to star AVR. Uh-oh. Looks like it just neural safe. Yep, we got yep, the green got flag. Green. Wow. Whew. Sliding in there. <laughs> Paul Macbeth playing the birdie play as well. Interesting. Here's your lead card. Walking down to their allies. We are going to pop into the booth for just a second again to say hi. And then also, sorry for earlier. <laughs> it looks like we're doing good, though. The signal's looking great. Um, it was out of our control, but hey. We're doing the best we can. We're doing the best we can on the Disc Golf Network. And thank you guys so much for your patronage and tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the show. Hi, Mom. <laughs> She's watching. Is she really? Yep. That's she bought awesome, the package man. to Aww. watch. She's been watching most of my tour this year from the booth and supporting the DGN and Live disc golf. That's so sweet. Also, uh, all right, Philo, Karen Lindsay's oh, up yeah. in Seattle watching bacon cookies. Oh, nice. Yep. Shoebox cookies, if you guys are looking for it, almost the holiday time. <laughs> Check her out, man. She's got some awesome treats. Cool. Nice looking drive from Joel Freeman over there on hole 12. This is Drew Gibson from the drop zone on hole 10. Nice yeah. do. Chance to save par for Gibson. throw himself out of his shoes? I probably picked up a little stone or something. <laughs> I mean, he throws hard, but he does. Macbeth. That is his raptor. Should see a nice smooth hyzer from Paul. Oh, that's nice job, Paul. High and spiky. Drops it inside circle one. Tap in putt for Paul. Looks like he's going to snatch that lead back. That's a Certainly birdie putt. It is for the time being. But it's anybody's game. Still got a ways to go. A lot of difficult shots ahead. Chris Dickerson, his second on hole 10. Looks like Chris going to that PA3 putter. Oh, man, uncharacteristic mistakes from the defending. Did he do that yesterday, too? I think he did. He did, right? Goodness gracious, man. Just untimely, you know, brick from Chris Dickerson. Yeah. You know, it's still in the mix, still had an opportunity, mm -hmm. and that just... Mm. That's killer. That's kind of a dagger right there. That might be one of those last nails in the coffin type of thing after that start, you know, and then just giving him a chance, and he's just not taking advantage. He's going to need help from here. Big time. Martin Hendel. Oh, no, excuse me, Chris Dickerson throwing again now. Throwing four, just trying to salvage a bogey now. I wonder if that was just a bad wind read or something. It, these discs are dying in the 
wind. Just barely creeps that one safe. And that's a sigh of relief for Chris Dickerson. Hey, you could really see that putter getting dropped out of the air. Yeah, I like to throw my Firebird on that second shot and take any doubt of the wind right. beating my disc. Yeah, man. Just swing it out there to the circle's edge and know that thing's going to track back towards those bricks. And you can see Martin Hendel's AVR got just back in bounds. This is his second attacking for a birdie. Can you see it happening? Can you see how the wind is yeah. pushing down on the disc, they not are. on it to hook up? Well, Martin Hendel's going to be inside circle one, putting up towards the basket. Jump up ahead, and Ricky Wysocki on the tee of 12. Halo Destroyer from Rick. That sits on the spine. He's going to be a happy guy. Sit there, sit. Oh, yeah. Good shot from Ricky Wysocki just behind the drop zone inside 400 feet. Really? Yep. All so right. He's going to have a nice clean look at it. No doubt an attack from there. Swinging over to Joel Freeman while the lead card walks. This is his second on hole 12. Big shot. Same thing, got a crosswind, so that thing's got to hook up in a hurry. It's trying. I think that's good. Green flag. Oh, correct. And that's a very runnable birdie putt as well. Absolutely. He's going to be up, up putting up the grade mm -hmm. inside circle one. Hey, he set himself up nicely. Mm -hmm. and Dickerson. This is four bogey. So difficult to repeat the effort out here at Winthrop to go back to back. And Chris Dickerson, unfortunately, showing us just how difficult it is today. That's going to end up in a double bogey. That is going to be a lot to come back from. A lot. You know, I can't, can't say it's going to end his tournament, but it's chance of winning I'm gonna say more than likely yes yeah drew Gibson to save par off the band goes drew is that gonna roll out of bounds I hope not. That looks like it stayed safe. That's going to be close, man. If he's out of bounds, he gets to putt again from where he is. He's reaching for another putter. That sounds like he did, in fact, trickle out. Oh, he gets brutal. To putt again. Yes. 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 Confirmation from his card mates. He is indeed out. So now this is a putt for double. Since that one home at least, a hell of a tourniquet putt from Gibson. Two but double bogeys going to be had here on what's usually one of the easier holes on yeah. the track. Yeah, eagles and birdies what we're used to on this one. At least par. At yeah. least a par. Yeah, you're feeling bad about a par on you 10, are, honestly. Yeah, you do feel bad about a par or worse, leaving from hole 10. So if, you're, if you're playing it for birdie, this is one of the easier holes on the course. It's so straightforward. Two rock shots will do. Yeah. Two mid-range shots. Two overstable mid-range shots, you know, just play extremely safe twice and you got a birdie putt. That's what Martin did, and that's what he has right now. Marty climbs the hill for the birdie nicely. Whoa. That was close. A little too excited to go grab that one. And there is Paul for birdie, and he is once again your solo leader at 25 down. Chris Dicker then drops in an unfortunate double. And he's going to drop him down the board. Over to 12 we go for Ricky Wysocki, second. This looks like a layup play. You're not even attacking the green with that swing. Interesting. Ew, yeah, that's a long way, man. Oh. He's 120 feet away. Jump putt layup for Ricky Wysocki. 
Exactly. That'll end up in a par, most likely. Mm -hmm. Joel Freeman, we saw that second shot. There he is, right at the base of the hill, coming back up the grade. This is a tie for the lead. No. Oh, just never gave it a chance. Oh, if you think, you know, he's going to be thinking about these two putts here on 11 and 12. Had great opportunities. You know, Threw such good shots. The body did not respond to what the brain was telling it, and Joel Freeman was allowing a couple of very crucial circle one putts to slip through his fingers, not Under drawing metal pressure. on either. <laughs> it's the pressure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, it'll get you. McBeast has found himself a one-stroke lead as he heads into 11. Not an easy place to keep it there. How much competitive golf do you get to play, Ian? Like, I play about like two. Like when it actually matters. Like about two tourneys a year. Do you ever get that feeling when you go to putt where it's like you feel the power juice uh -huh. up and then you go to putt and it's like, -doo. Oh, yeah. That's kind of what it looked like happened with Joel uh -huh. Freeman. He got loaded up and as soon as he got to go forward, just the power shut down. Yeah. I hate that feeling. It's the worst ever. Is that a Brinster in the background? Checking out the action. Spectators, hold, please. Martin Hendel on the tee of 11 with a Wraith. Dropped a roller he down. He did throw a roller. Get into the bubble. Let's see if it's got enough speed. I don't think that fought out. Uh, well, at least he's pushed far enough up the fairway that, you know, mm -hmm. potential par is in play. I think that's what he was thinking about. That was his game plan on this hole is I'm going to take my stab if I make it safe. Cool. Yeah. If not, par is still in play. Yeah, we saw that yesterday as well. I think a lot of players are doing that this year on hole 11. Years past, it used to be all out of bounds, and there's no way you take the risk. Now it's all hazard. You play it from where it lies. You get to progress. Mm hmm and you should still par, you right? You should still par. It's yeah. only 735 feet. It's not the longest par four ever. This guy carried the hazard yesterday. Can he pull it off again today when it matters even more? Talk to me, Philo. It's hard to say, man. I think he's going to be good, but barely. It doesn't look good, man. It's so hard to tell, though. Nobody's clapping, man. If that was safe, the that place would have blown up. Off the fairway after two throws. In the, in the hazard. hazard. In the hazard. Yeah. The gallery would have cheered. You would have known. Yeah, you're right. Nothing doing there for Macbeth. Missing the mark. You know, Drew Gibson wants to find that space out there. Halo. Deep in the fairway. Halo Destroyer. That's enough. No, it's not. Both those shots too high. Typically, you do see guys keep the disc quite a bit lower on that shot. They're, the grade of the ground in front of them is slightly uphill, so you got to aim just a bit over that. But those guys are throwing it like higher than the holly bushes and more. Yeah. Like, way he's towering high, and it's just too much headwind stalling them out. Dickerson. side trying to avoid the hollies three out of four times <laughs> something very similar to that has happened right there that's funny isn't it bashes the hollies and falls out on the edge he's still got a play it's inside of 400 feet from there for chris dickerson he can we've seen him try the sidearm we've seen him try the the roller, roller. Yeah, yeah you never know yep we are on hole 13 with joel freeman he sits just one off the lead destroyer from joel That's a really nice rip, Ian. Yes, sir. Nice little baby flex. That's going to finish down on the lower right side. Ooh. More towards the center. Very nicely done, Joel Freeman. Is the parking lot lined up for him there, the carry? If he it wants is. it. I mean, he can get on to the surface of the green and two or, you know, the island. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he's going to get close to the basket. Yeah, well called. This is Kyle Klein. That's a long carry to get to the top edge of that, yeah. that island over there, man. Oof, it is. Simon Lazat speed, Eagle McMahon potential. Nate Sexton, Halo Destroyer.
You throw any of these Halo Destroyers, fella? A little too beefy for me, my friend. They are beef, aren't they? They certainly are. I'm not getting any younger. My arm is <laughs> looking for things that glide a bit more as I get older, and that Halo would be for... I would use that disc out here on certain occasions when you definitely want something that's not going to mm -hmm. stand up or anything. There's a few shots out here I'd use it on, but most days not. This is Chris Dickerson. Hole 11. Trying to deal with these hollies. I think he's got the F7 in his hands, Philo. I think we're going to see a roller. Yep, yeah, looks like shaping it. Shaping his body for the roller action. Going to try to pick a spot out there. Maybe just before the crest of the hill. Cut it, or overturned it, excuse me. Did it hit a stake that's or twice. something? I'm not sure, but either which way, I'm not sure if that's the best decision for the situation. I know he's a talented player, and he's really good at what he does, but, you know, there's so many variables with rollers in the wind. Mm -hmm. And the wind is blowing in his face, and he's exposing that back edge of the disc or the back flight plate to the wind, and it's just going to exaggerate whatever he does. Ricky, this is heading him lo more left than optimal. Oh, boy. Oh, he did it again. That's not ideal right there. Ricky Wysocki's no. in trouble on the fairway, just off the fairway on 13. Advantage Freeman on that hole, on the Big chase card. advantage for Joel Freeman. If he can stick that surface in two, guaranteed birdie. Martin Hendel throwing now his third on hole 11 after the hazard drive. He's still about 90 feet short of the safe side of hazard. Maybe a little less. Uh oh, that's in the hazard again. Hazard to hazard for Martin Hendel, and he's going to be in that same boat. Ricky Wysocki was putting for a bogey from somewhere in circle two, maybe if he pushed far forward enough. Usually, copying Ricky's game is great. On hole 11, not so much. Not today. No. Well, Martin putting for bogey, and don't know if he's that. Clear. That is a beautiful rainbow out there. I thought I saw it. Drew Gibson is in the hazard as well, throwing his third. Drew going jokery. That looks a little sawed off, Ian. Ooh, sit. He just breaks. barely inbounds is Drew Gibson. Chance to save par. Yep. Day's kind of getting away from Drew Gibson. Yeah, agreed. Macbeth throwing three from the hazard. This has got a good shape to it. Well inside circle one, that should be a par for Macbeth. Surprised to see him come up so short. Look at that, man. That's some 8, 10, 12 steps short of the line. Yeah, made it yesterday even. Mm. Just didn't connect perfectly today. This is Ricky Wysocki throwing his second over on hole That's 13. Good. He made the corner. That's real good. He's Did that yesterday it. too. <laughs> He's a scrappy guy. Yeah. Ricky trying to get that scramble rate up. And they have a nice opportunity to make birdie from... High left side of the fairway on 13. That is a tight battle, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle Klein and Ricky Wysocki from the chase card. And Joel Freeman. Right there. Trying One. to make things interesting for the McBeast. One stroke back. Dickerson getting ready to throw his fourth on hole 11. From the hazard. Talking with Todd from the PDGA. So was he out of bounds, Philo? If he rolled through the gallery, yes, that sidewalk, I believe, is the, the end of the hole. Mm -hmm. So looks like he's out of bounds. Now throwing from the hazard. Okay. Chance to save bogey. Ouch, man. Yeah. This is Joel's third now on hole 13. He is in position. Firebird here coming from Joel. 
like this play. He's got a lot of room to work with out on the wide side, swinging in with the Firebird. Couple more skips. He's got gonna like that. That's an another chance for him to tie up Paul McBeth at the top. Yes, it is, Ian. Hopefully he's got that putt figured out. He's gonna have to get it figured out. He can't keep missing these five pace putts inside circle one. That's just, there's no excuse for that. And Martin Handel really shawled that one off as well. And he's gonna have a Eek. tester putt. Things kind of coming unraveled up here on the lead card. They huh? are. Wow. There's always that potential on a championship round for the lead card to just be a little shaky and nobody's really doing anything. Yeah. Like Macbeth had that hot start since then, flatline. Chris Dickerson flatlined out the whole gate. Martin's been like the most consistent one. Mm -hmm. Four down through 10. Drew Gibson to salvage a par. Backtracking again on Drew. It's a couple of times today he's got the really bad reaction off the cage. Got to get the disc in the chains. Now putting up a, the hill again, this time for bogey. Never too on the chains. Time. Yeah, too much air time. Aimed a bit higher, hoping for a drop. Didn't get it. Sails the basket. Kind of putting back into the wind again. And a whole bogey coming. This hole has his number. It got him yesterday, too. Well, it's got two guys' number today, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. Yep. Martin Handel, this is going to be for six. Potentially three guys walking out of here with a dub, huh? Jeez. If headwind putt here. Good thing he's a spin putter. Oh. Catches a lot of chains, grazes off and glazes off rather, and mm -hmm. he's gonna be adding a hockey stick to his scorecard here on number 11. That's a big old oofta for his round. Chris Dickerson for bogey. on that at least. Macbeth for the par save. Maintains the one stroke lead over Joel Freeman and Ricky Wysocki. Kyle Klein sits just two back as well. Gibson for the double. Band-aid putt there. Back-to-back -back double bogeys for Drew Gibson. The worst time possible. Martin Hendel, that is, as you mentioned, a hockey stick for the Canadian. Ricky Wysocki throwing his third on hole 13. Crucial shot for Ricky Wysocki. That's got to hook up and skip hard. Looks like he's just around circle one. Is he? Okay. Looked like it. Kyle Klein. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, really yeah. nice from Kyle Klein. And ahead on the green, Ricky Wysocki for birdie, hole 13. This may be between circles, Ian. He might be a little deeper than we gave him credit for. Gave it a bid, Off face mask cage. one more time. Ricky's screaming at himself, get it in the air. <laughs> Joel Freeman, a chance to tie for the lead. No, oh, three in a row, Joe Freeman, come on, oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, the day it could be for Joel Freeman right he now. Could if he could have a two-stroke lead right now. Some belief in his putting stroke is just not there. You can tell the disc hasn't got on the chains. Three putts in a row. 
mm. airmailed two of them. That one just never mm, had a chance. Never had a chance. So unfortunate for Joel. He's going to be kicking himself in the parking lot. He's still he got a chance, short? though. He's still got a chance. He's still I mean, got a but chance. Should he not win, you know, he's going to be thinking about those three putts if this is a one-stroke oh, loss. Oh, yeah. Ugh. That's what makes championship day so special, man, is who's going to rise above and who's going to answer the call. Right now, it's still anybody's game. Still a toss-up. Wow. At least for those four names, the four top names on the board anyway. Yeah, they have separated, haven't they? They have. There's a nice little cushion four or five strokes. Yeah, five clear of the field is the, that uh, top four pack there. These guys are running out of holes. Macbeth on a tee of 12. Stand that up a little too much, Ian. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, that's coming inside nicely. All right, never mind. Do you think he plays this for par, Philo? To, av to avoid just the tin cupping possibilities? I wouldn't mind it from a game plan perspective. Seeing as being as he's not on the card with the guys that are closest to him, playing for par does sound smart. Dickerson up next. Those guys are still out ahead of him. Mm -hmm. and he can kind of wait and see what they do and kind of do this match play from here on out. Pick your spots to press. You have to. Every time out here at Winthrop, you have to be mindful, have a strategy on how you're going to be successful. And at this stage of the game, it's now kind of a mano a mano thing. And like I just mentioned, he's not playing with the guys that are closest to him. Yeah. And there are a couple of holes, a few shots in front of him. So, like, he can kind of pace himself a little bit and kind of see what happens and make a game time decision based on that. Exactly. Back in the day, the players didn't have that advantage, you know what I'm saying? You just have to go play your game thinking you were behind the whole time. Gibson with a destroyer. That's a really good spot. That's there for Drew Gibson. a lovely drive by Gibson. Trying to fight back from those double bogeys on 10 and 11. You got a chance here, Drew. Martin Hendel. Martin will be going Wraith off the tee here. Stand that up nicely, asking for that to hustle back left. Oh, great nice. drive. Yeah, it's a really nice spot there for Martin. He's yeah. got his decision to make. Would he lay up for par or take a stab at the green? Mm -hmm. Up ahead to 14, can we go to watch Kyle Klein? And you saw the upshot on 13. He did make that putt. He has just one off the lead in that three-way tie for second place currently. Wow. Thing for the Y hide spiking hyzer. Try to mitigate the big skip at the end, and that comes in a little too early. It's not going to bounce forward. He's going to have a circle two death putt Ooh. with some wind blowing around on that elevated. Decision time for that man. Nate Sexton is reaching for an Excalibur on hole 14. Slow day for Nate Sexton, sitting three under par for the day. Just one bogey, four birdies. Tied for fifth, though. He's still in the top ten. Yeah. Five strokes out of contention for making things any more interesting. Looks a little high. Yeah, you'd have to like make an ace, make an eagle. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things. Oh, I, we'll take that drop in birdie on 14. That's perfect what that is. Wow. Eight. Sexton showing off the sidearm skills. Some power on that one. Joel Plenty Freeman. Speed. Destroyer. Huge moment right now for Joel Freeman. I feel like he's got to put one just drop in a ball, right? Yeah, you need something. You need something to get his confidence level, yeah. right? Yeah, it's in that range. Oh, He's been struggling with the one. last three holes. We'll see what he can do. Oh, Joel no. Freeman in position to force the issue a little bit and add a little bit more pressure. This could be like a four-way guy, you know, four-way playoff mm -hmm. here. You never know. Ricky Wysocki with a Halo Destroyer. You like it, Ian? Looking good. Nice it's it. Slow down. Ooh. Screen flag, but a long putt for Ricky Wysocki. Chris Dickerson wants no part of it. No part of this. Yeah, you're way out of position when you're over 400 feet. It's playing uphill into a heading crossing wind. It's a long carry. Hey, you really never started that drive far right enough. No. You want to stay on the other side of the spine. This is the higher side of the, of the land. 
As you can see more of the green area, at least the undulation of the ground to let you know where the green starts. Great spot for Paul. Paul's in a perfect position. He can hang it out there towards that tree on the right side of the basket. Just throw it dead straight at that thing and let the overstable pull it back. Plenty of room to work with on that green. Big shot coming for Paul Macbeth, your leader by a stroke. Stands up, it's going to be real nice. That Philo. is the sound of drop zone. Philo. Door ajar. Kyle Klein, Joel Freeman, Ricky Wysocki. The door is open. Oh my goodness. Did he need to do that? I don't think so, he man. Didn't have to. I don't think so. I don't I don't think this was this was the spot. This is one of those it. holes that will derail you, man. I told you. 11-12-13. It's a 10-cup hole. This is the gauntlet. Because he's, he's got to throw the same shot he's again. He's got to go to the drop zone, and it's not the better angle from what he just had. He doesn't even get to throw the same shot again, which is kind of, of a bummer, man, you would like to think. Yeah. You throw mm -hmm. OB from, you know, you go into the hazard, you throw the same shot again, but it's automatic drop zone, and it's a way worse angle than what he just had. It looked like he grabbed a Raptor. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. The only thing that matters is he did not come to... Rest in safe territory. I'm going to say, what, what's the distance on that drop zone shot? Oh, my bad. I'm saying that he's grabbing an overstable fairway. I'm, I'm wondering if he's even just laying up now. I think it's just inside for 365, something like that, okay. 370. He could get a Raptor there then. Martin Hendel. When you shoot it with the Bushnell, that's what it's going to say, but it feels much further. Mm -hmm. Slightly uphill, I guess, huh? It is slightly uphill, and you're throwing against the wind. The wind is blowing straight from that corner I mean, right in the middle of your screen towards you, mm -hmm. towards us. Hendel attacks the green. It looks like it has enough length. Let's see if it settles down on the backside. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> That's not something you expect to see from Martin Hendel no. overthrow the green. He's heading to the drop zone as well. Obviously not the same implications as what it means for this man right here. Macbeth, he really needs to stick this one tight. Mm -hmm. You cannot hemorrhage more than one stroke here. Absolutely. That's a long putt, man. Mm. Dangerous putt. Mm. Wind going against the grain. Down slope leading to hazard or Ooh, OB boy. even, right? Lots of things could happen right here. This could really just knock him two, three sticks back from where those guys are Man. right now. Martin Hendel throwing his fourth. And that should be green. Oh, nice. Hendel is in bounds. We are going to swing over to Ricky Wysocki. Hole. Nope, we're not. We're going to stay with Drew Gibson. This is his second shot. He's eyeing down the green. Plenty of space to work with. Inside 350 feet. I think that's his buzz. Is there a buzz or Firebird? I see here. Puts a little early cut on that. Expecting a late fade. Drew Gibson. Beautiful shot. Ooh. Well inside circle one. Really nice. That'll help right the ship for Drew. Ricky Wysocki on 14 for birdie. No. Has a chance for Joel Freeman to grab a stroke on him. Speaking of the man, there he is. His fourth birdie putt. In four Look holes. in a row in four holes. Mm -hmm. He is 0 for 3 so far. And they were all not pretty. No. <laughs> <laughs> not trying to throw some shade at the man, but State not facts. his best efforts. Yeah. He knows what a good looks looks like. He, he wouldn't argue with you. Uh, he finally got it up, though, Philo. Got it in the air, but too much air. Maybe a little lift from the crosswind, and Joel Freeman is really squandering his opportunity. He could be out in front by now three strokes. Wild. With just circle one putts, just the stuff that we practice all the time. This, that's the pressure, man. Ricky talked about it. They're in the cooker. They're in the you pressure. You are cooker. at Winthrop. <laughs> 
Chris Dickerson. Four holes to play for that chase card. Chris Dickerson on 12. Just playing it for par. Does this, yep, that's very nice. Does so perfectly. Playing this for par looks real good after watching Marty and Paul. You asked the most perfect question at the time. Does he need to go for this? No. Yeah. No, he did not need to go for that. Those are the decisions, the game time decisions that will define who wins. Who wins? Absolutely. Yeah. Those just those little decisions here and there. We'll see how this all plays out. He's got a couple of holes. He's behind these guys on the chase guard, so he'll have an opportunity to play catch up after he falls behind. We'll see how these other three guys bring it into the house. All of them sitting right at that eight under seven under mark for the round, shooting some pretty solid golf. Macbeth. Four bogey out here in circle two. Dangerous look. Uh, he needed a McBeast moment, was not able to get it. Double bogey coming for Macbeth. What a huge drop that is, man. Crazy. All you can do is just regain composure, regain focus, and try to finish out these last five holes. Birdie, 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 birdie. That's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. Well, when this hole ends, he's going to find himself in second place with a three-way tie at the top. Klein, Freeman, and Wysocki. This is Hendel. Handel. Handel. I'm such a big fan of this guy after watching these last couple days, Philo. It's great. He's going to gain some more fans for yeah. sure after that performance. Yeah, he's not the youngest kid on the block, but Martin Handel's got an awesome skill set, great mentality. He's battling his way through this round, through the ups and downs. There's a nice birdie for Drew Gibson, I believe. Drew Gibson couldn't have played the hole any better. Chris Dickerson, smart. And there is the double bogey. And this big putt from Martin Hendel. I bet it's crowd approved. Let's check it out. Yeah. Get him, Marty. Nice fist pump. We are going to take one more quick break on the Disc Golf Network. Catch everyone in just a few moments. Get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing, trying to just really let everything besides the basket lead away. I'm Sarah Nicholson, founder of Throw Pink, and I just want to welcome everyone to the Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championship. I hope that this will be an amazing experience for the women that are here. The Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championship is Throw Pink's first big splash in the professional side of the game. I want to continue to just grow the professional side and to use my time and resources that I have with Throw Pink to make this event bigger and better every year. Welcome back to beautiful Rock Hill and the United States Disc Golf Championships. That is the chase card they have chased. They are now the lead card. Kyle Klein, Joel Freeman, Ricky Wysocki all tied at 24 down there. One clear of your one-time, your once-leader, Paul Macbeth. 
Sits one back at 23 down. Next gap there is that man, Nate Sexton, sitting at 20. So still possible for Nate, but he's going to need some help from those top four. And he's going to need to birdie out more than likely. And he's going to need to birdie out. Not impossible out here. It can be done. They're all gettable. They are waiting to tee, so we will show you a Paul Macbeth drive on hole 13. Paul has done this every round, pretty much landed in the same spot. Just a little left of center in the fairway. Good position. Hanging out with the rest of the league card there. Back to our chase slash now league card we go. We're on hole 15. I don't think we've ever seen something like this transpire before, man, where the whole chase card just pretty much overtook the lead card like that nearly did anyway. Just Nate Sexton is the only guy kind of off the mark, just yeah. a hair. <laughs> yeah, right. It's pretty incredible stuff. He's still having a good round, too. Four, da four down right now. It's solid. Yeah, it's I guess I wouldn't call overly it Overly excited about, but I mean, you finish out here five, six under par, you feel really good about that round. Yeah. Nate Sexton. Sexton Firebird. If he wants a shot at this tournament, it starts right now. That's been his play, and it's been working. Ooh, that dragged oh. down way out of position, though. He's going to have a yeah. tight gap, and another gap after that he's going to have to navigate to find the green. Not a big fan of the sidearm play here on Clown's Mouth. Really doesn't help the, the angles at all. Yeah, he was he was able to keep it in the fairway yesterday, which worked. but Barely. Get, he caught that tree. He yeah. had an awkward stance and made it work. That's true. Kyle Klein, one of your three leaders. I like the shape of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh buddy. Yeah. Perfect. Sweet spot? Perfect. Can't ask for much more than that. He did set up just the meatiest gap, didn't he? It's perfect. I would drop my disc there every time. I'd take four shots from there. Joel Freeman. Also tied for the lead. Like he made the Mando? I think he came up a hair short, potentially. The reaction from the crowd and everything, his reaction doesn't look too positive. Ricky Waisaki. This is the Invictus from Ricky. Really going Invictus. Let's see. Yeah, Big that's it. I don't know if that made. I thought he made it. He made got it. some claps, OK. We'll see if he made it around the corner. Looks like that was a bit early. He doesn't look too thrilled about it. I think he's going to be in that little bush shrub area yeah. just past the Mandos. It's not going to be the best. Paul McBeth, second shot up back on 13. Buzz there from That's Paul. pretty dang good, man. Yeah, that looked perfect. Hope you guys have been enjoying the week with us here on the DGN, bringing you the last major championship of this 2021 season. We got the Disc Golf Pro Tour finale coming up from Charlotte's Web next week. Be sure to tune in and catch all the action. The biggest purse in the history of Disc Golf, $30,000 going to each men and women's sides winner. And a whole bunch of cash following that up for the runners ups and so on. How about that? I wish I was playing, man. Wish I got to play a couple more tournaments now. Go get some more extra cash, but hey, man, it's been a fun ride this year being in the broadcast booth instead of on a few of extra of those tournaments out on the road. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Joel Freeman was a bit short, dropping down a little sidearm roller. Just trying to get himself into position for par. Par's not bad once you do that. Ricky Wysocki taking a walk into the woods as well. 
suspense. Look at that. Thickens once again, huh? It just gets tighter and tighter out here. I've got a fun stat from Stat Mando. Are you ready? Let's have it. All right. Every previous winner of this event has either been in first or second place to start the final round. So if someone other than Paul or Chris wins, it'll be the first time ever that's happened. How about them apples? Isn't that wild? That's, I would not have guessed that. Me either. And so many seemingly like come from behind victory. Oh, right Ricky here, did miss the Mando. Oh boy. Yeah. Big time shot here for Ricky. He's got a salvage par. Ooh. He's going to be in circle two. Is that a makeable putt, Philo? It's, it's open. Is he's, it? He's on the proper side of the green. He's off to the left. He's going to have a pretty unobstructed putt, but he's got 35, 40 feet, maybe more. Nate Sexton, that actually isn't too bad. A little extra work in the distance, but he's got a nice looking tunnel to get to the green. Getting word from Perkins. Ricky has an open 42 footer for par. Mm, a little bit long, a little bit left for Sexton. The basket's going to be right about there. Okay. And he's got an opportunity. We'll see how obstructed it is. Got a bit of an extra skip that I'm sure he didn't need. But Nate's saying it's, it's a obstructed putt for Sexton coming up. Oh man, Nate Perkins on the ground. We got Kyle Klein coming up here? Yes, we do. Oh, look at this drive. He called it, man. He parks this outright leader. Ooh, oh, good tree stop. That's a bonus stop there. Big time. He needed that. Kyle Klein have a tap in. And he is going to be leading with three left to play. Can't count out Paul, though. Sitting just one off the pace. Can't count him out. No, it, will, it will be two after Kyle Klein makes that birdie. See the chalk explosion after that throw? Certainly did. That, that had a lot of heat on it. Fortunate cool. to catch that tree there by the bucket under the hollies. And he's going to have a tap in. This is a big shot for Macbeth right now. It definitely wants to snuggle this one up close. It's on a nice line, Ian. Yes, it is. Right. That's safely inside circle one. We'll call that four or five paces away. Count Oops. that one. You, yeah, for Macbeth for at this stage, he ain't yeah. missing that now. Nope. It would have to be a chain out or something or a spit out more than anything. I believe that was Ricky. No, it wasn't Ricky. Who was that? Hang on. I lost it. But anyway, there are your scores. We still have a three-way tie for the moment. Kyle Klein has an absolute drop-in for birdie. Joel Freeman looking to salvage par. I believe so. And we have Ricky Waisaki with a very long par putt coming up. The suspense, man. It's ratcheting up every hole, every shot. Live disc golf. Big oh. time putt for Ricky Waisaki right now. Off the mark to the oh. right. And that's gaining feet as it slides past. Too much want on that one. Pushed it right. It's a low ceiling, so he's definitely trying to focus on keeping the disc in the chains. With that comes a little bit of a sliding action, and unfortunately, a little bit too much slide, and that's seven, oh. eight, nine paces away for oh, Rick. Oh, no. That's a bit extra. And now this is coming back for Bogey. He's going to be sitting at least two off the lead after the hole concludes. It's going to be three. Still rolling. Nate Sexton should be up next. Unfortunately for Ricky Waisaki, that may spell the end of his tournament as far as a win is concerned. Kind of feel like we're, like we're down to three, Philo. And then there were three. Nate Sexton. A very obstructed putt. It is for Birdie, though. Fantastic putt by Sexton. Timely, fantastic putt for Nate Sexton. Yeah. Still keeps him alive in the conversation, brings him to 21 under. It's going to be four off of Kyle Klein's pace once the hole is over. Ricky Wysocki, this is for double bogey. 
barely makes Luke's, it. Yeah, just barely crept Jeez. out over the rim. Wysocki, unfortunately, missing the mandatory off of the tee. Just sends him to the drop zone and trouble from there. Joel Freeman, a good par save. But he will still lose a stroke to Kyle Klein. I'm sure he's going to wonder how come he couldn't do that a few times in the the last few, huh? Yeah. And just there, pop it in there. And we got a new leader, Philo. Yeah, Kyle Klein. Kid by out of Michigan, stick. huh? Yeah. Doing work out here at USDGC. Rookie of the year just a season ago. Got himself a couple of big wins out on tour this season. Earned his way here to the USDGC. And now he is atop the leaderboard. Your outright leader over one, Paul McBeth. Can you believe it? Three to play, and they are all dangerous. This is going to be so exciting. Swing it over to Drew Gibson. This is an eagle putt on hole 13. This goes in. He's going to the top 10. <gasps> Drew Gibson from way downtown. Whoa. That puts Drew at 19. So six off the pace is Drew. This is Paul McBeth putting for birdie. Yeah. And that, never a doubt. So Paul makes good, and that puts him back into second place tie with Joel Freeman at 24 down. They are both one back of Kyle Klein. Who do you got, man? Dude. You picking a name? Oh. <laughs> oh. Right? I, mean, I feel like Kyle's got the momentum right now. Momentum is very fickle on this course. It though, is. Right? It's Nick one shot away from <laughs> 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 It's anything away. <laughs> a shot, a putt, a... What are, your, uh, what are your Philo senses telling you, my friend? Still too early to say, man. I, I want to. I would love to see a young Kyle Klein win and do something that hasn't been done for a while since the days of a Nico LeCastro or a Will Schustrick, you know, one mm -hmm. of those young bucks yeah. coming out and making a splash early and taking down a major, you know, well early into his career. It's something that most of us don't, you know, ever get close to touching let alone, you know, chasing it down over a 15 or 20 year career. You know, these guys knocking it out early, that confidence level boost going forward to the next handful of years. Yeah. You could be another one of those protege style Paul McBeth type players that the confidence just, it comes from those moments. It comes from a win like this. He's building on it, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's exactly what he's working for. He's that's a great out on tour card. full time. He's had a clean round doing work, keeping it together, playing within his means. Bogey free effort, nine down through 15. Still looking cool as a cucumber. Look at him. Yep. He is an absolute gamer. I've seen him in some intense situations, and he does not shy from big moments. He's not afraid to throw the disc. No, that's that's a great way to put it. We are on hole 16 with our chase card, Nate Sexton. That's an Excalibur. Whoever said that, I agree. I think it was Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Parked. Nice shot, Sexton. Lance Brown, give him some nucks. Was that Evan Evan right there hanging out with the guys, too? I missed it. It looked like him for a brief second. Oh, Evan Scott? Yeah. Oh, cool. Kyle Klein, big, big shot for this man. Uh-oh. Uh oh, he's a glide. Russell, big skip. Woo! Oh, oh boy. That's a great, great birdie opportunity. Joel Freeman up next. He sits just one off Kyle Klein. Looks like he needs a birdie to keep it there. Destroyer. Not only does he need a birdie, he needs that thing to be close because this putter's been failing him as of late, and that is headed towards the hazard. And the driver has faulted him here. That's probably going to be it for Joel's chances, minus a throw in and a birdie or I don't know, a blow up from Kyle on 17, too. You know, those are possible. This can still happen. Nobody's yep. out of it just yet. 17 has not sung yet. This is a Halo Destroyer from Ricky Wysocki. Rick's it at 22 down, three off the pace. I like the looks of this. 
I wonder why. Because he has no work <laughs> left. Ricky Wysocki battling back as he normally does. That's a determined look on Ricky's face right now. That face is permanently etched on that kid's face when he's between the ropes. <laughs> it is, isn't it? He is our, our Ricky Bobby of disc golf. Wysocki continuing to fight, bouncing back from that just devastating double bogey the hole before. Dialing up a dime here on hole 16, leaving himself with a tap in putt. He's going to find himself at 23 under as he makes the walk up to 17. Looking like a probable 26 for Kyle Klein. He's got a solid look at it and may have one of those uh, Chia sticks to, to uh -huh. putt around, but shouldn't be too much work. We go back down the course to 14 to watch Paul Macbeth rip on a force. Final Coliseum hole, that is dragging out, picking up right on time. Let's see about the finish. Circle two putt for Birdie. Safe putt back up the hill for McBeast. We'll see if he can connect. It's gonna need a couple to end this thing with Kyle Klein. Looking like he's gonna get to 26 here. Yeah, it's a bit of a fortunate thing for Macbeth to be, you know, a couple of holes back at this stage of the game. Yeah. Kind of get to see what happens. And Joel laid up from the hazard to concede the bogey. This is for birdie for your leader. And a two-stroke lead. High in the chains, but it's in. A sigh of relief. He goes, goes to pick that one up. Yeah, I think he felt like he had a potential of missing that for a split second. It was slid out and it was fortunate high. to get gobbled up by the chains nicely. These hit of a 28s, putting in work out here most of the time. Haven't seen too many nasty yeah. reactions, a couple here and there, but. One of my favorite targets, absolutely. Yeah, me too. That was a birdie for Sexton. That is a bogey for Freeman after Ricky dropped in his birdie. I'm getting some jitters, man. Dude, I'm, I'm getting I'm some chills right now. <laughs> it's getting crazy. Paul McBeth for birdie on 14. Big, big putt for this man's round. Huge make for McBeth. Listen to that roar from the gallery from the five time. He's one back, Philo. He's got a few extra holes, two more holes than the lads out in front. Oh my goodness. Drew Gibson has shown some respect, giving him a little love. That was a huge putt there from Macbeth. He really needed that one. Big, big make. Man, and those have been kind of slipping through his fingers, you know, minus yesterday's round. That was the round where he really put it all together. But earlier in the tournament, you know, and previously on tour, he's been struggling from right in that range, you know, 35 feet and making good at a very crucial moment. Still holding on to that one stroke de deficit, excuse me, of mm -hmm. Kyle Klein. It's going to be a shootout here towards the finish. Almost home. Chase Cards making the walk up to 17. Paul McBeth will be working his way over to the clown's mouth hole 15. Man, I'm standing up. I got out the chair. Man. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's a nail biter in the best way possible. Over to 14 to watch Drew Gibson. Birdie putt. And sneaks that one over and in. Still hanging around. A few more holes to go to earn that exemption. He's not going to be in contention to win now. Six strokes off the pace. Four holes to play, but a great bounce back after those double sixes right there in the middle, 10 and 11. Wow. Coming back, birdie, eagle birdie. Got to like to see that out of Drew. I feel like if Drew could just play 10, 11, 12 for par next year, he might win. It killed his round yesterday, too. Uh, those are the things he's going to have to take note of after this tournament's over. And This is such a thinking man's course. It is. And there's so many de decisions to be made. It's not. It's straightforward in the way that it looks, but it's not straightforward in the choices that it makes you, you know, choose from. And th that's where this tournament is won and lost is, you know, do you stay or do you go? You know, do you hold them or... Do you fold them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes it's smart just to lay them on the table and say, you got to go. You know, there's those moments where it's like, this is one of those moments I have to try to keep up. And Macbeth, you know, you think back to hole 12 and that driver, that second shot, you know, like he didn't really have to do that. He just opened the door for three other guys, you know, and 
if he makes it safe, yeah, I mean, it's all good, you know, but I mean, those are those risk reward moments that you got to really consider. You know, those are the choices and the options that everybody has to, to weigh. I just don't think it was there at the time. That was the long walk 17 our chase card is doing right now. Paige Pierce out there with the scooter in the gallery, <laughs> nice. sipping on a beer. Unfortunate <laughs> day for her yesterday. Yeah. Having that healthy lead coming into moving day and things just falling apart on her. And she's a champ. She'll be back. I'm yep. sure she's stoked for one Missy Gannon putting in work on the women's side today. One of her best friends. One of her best friends out on tour. So big shout out and pound out there. Fist pump knuckles to Missy Gannon. Well done. She is such a gamer, man. Like she is, she rises to big moments every time I see her play. More and more of them are starting to show up, my yeah, man. It's, it's so cool. Your scores as they sit. Isaac Robinson popping into your top 10. Kid's got some game too. Yes, he does. Can throw it a long way. He gets streaky with the putter. That whole family can play. We are looking back down the fair. We have a 17 to the T. Looks like Nate Sexton will be stepping up first. Look at those trees, Ian. They're moving, aren't they, buddy? It's a crossing wind. Wow, they're alive. Expect a little bit of extra push and speed and a fast drop when that thing's coming out of the air with that wind. Mm -hmm. Sexton Firebird. Playing that well safe. Deep into circle two for Nate Sexton. Wanted nothing to do with the front side of that green. Take his chances from there. What's the wing going to do the disc right here, Philo? Well, when you're throwing the sidearm, it's going to exaggerate and pick up the, the speed. Hyzer. Yeah, and then it's also, it, it could do a couple of things. It really depends on what side of the wind you're on. Biggest Most shot. of the time, like the crossing wind wants to slam you. Huge shot for Kyle Klein. Safely he is on the inbound green. safely. Big. Big moment right there for that man. That's good. That could potentially make Macbeth have to get aggressive for the, you know, for the pin. Yep, exactly. This will be Kyle's first major. Open major, anyway. He is an AM Worlds winner. Rick, he's going for the change, man. <laughs> Perfectly executed shot from Ricky Wysocki. It's not over yet. He is a few back off of Kyle Klein, but 18 can cause some havoc on people. Yes. You just never know. Yes. Joel Freeman. Joel going Gator 3. He's had some good wind reads, and he's just going to pump this way to the far side of Kenny's earlobe. Out there in circle two, and that is more than likely just a three. He's a long ways away. He's conceding, isn't he? Yeah. Right. Big shot for Rick to get on the green. Well inside circle one. That's going to be a birdie opportunity. Could potentially close the gap to two. Mm -hmm. And he'll see what happens with Kyle Klein's drive on 18. So that slide out of bounds. Ricky might get aggressive. Yeah, that's a good point. So nice to have the galleries back, isn't it? Paul Macbeth ready to launch on 15. So important to make the Mando here. And he's made the Mando, but he's well short of the turn. That's pretty much out of contention for birdie. Thank you. It would take a miracle shot to really make that full turn and have a clean look. Got the first part of business done, but Coming up so short. Joel Freeman, long birdie bid. And he wants no part of that. That is a par for Freeman. Kyle Klein just needs to get up and down with this one. There it is. That's an up and down type of shot. Yep. Never got the disc any higher than the bottom of the cage. <laughs> 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 That's going to speed up right there. And Seen some really strange things happen. I've fallen victim to this basket and that water just off to the right, four paces. Oh man. Had to putt for birdie to potentially get second place. Thing hit up and rolled OB. Nate Sexton, no, he wants no part of it. Nobody that. wants it. And Ricky Wysocki is going to walk away with a lone birdie most likely. He's well inside circle one. That'll put him into solo third place for the time. He'll take that for now. Yeah. Give him an opportunity. It ain't over yet. Mm -hmm. He's got to cash it though. 
He's currently tied with Joel Freeman at 23 down. There it is. Yes. Good putt from the two-time world champ. Big roar from the home gallery. You can just gallery. see the dis disappointment on his face, though. Oh, yeah. He, he knows. Won. He, he kind of coughed up his opportunities out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He had it. A couple of plays just didn't go his way and falls off the pace in a quickness. A double bogey. Yeah, 15. Double on 15. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was the nail. Got to make the mandatory. That's first order of business is keep the disc in the middle. And Kyle Klein sneaks out of 17 with a par. 17 has sung for Kyle Klein. Nate Sexton with a par. <laughs> Getting some You don't some usually low. see the sidearm dominant players blowing 17. It's usually the guys going with the backhand putter play that have a hard time mm -hmm. putting the pieces together. There's yeah. so much space out there deep yeah. and right for the righty sidearm player that it's just pretty stress-free. You know, you just hang it out there. You got the hay bales to slow you down. You got the big Kenny's earlobe. No excuses not to land safe. Yeah. Over to Drew Gibson we go. This is going to be his second shot on hole 15. Halo Destroyer, it looks like. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. That's a fun play. It's out there for you. So it sounds like it didn't, didn't go too far, a little, little too high, possibly, but... It's Hopefully no over the at least that row of trees. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Drew giving Paul some advice. He says, "Don't do that." Paul Macbeth short of the corner. We're going to see a forehand roller, or just a kind of flex forehand. He's going to go forehand roller and try to get to the back side of the hollies and hook in there and give himself some kind of a look. He is sitting one back of your leader, Kyle Klein. He's not terribly far from the hole, you know, 280 feet, 290 feet. Let's see if he can shape something and give himself a look. And there is a there is a big backup on 18 right now, so you're not missing anything on that chase card. We'll show you to you once it happens live on the Disc Golf Network. Paul McBeth throwing his second on 15. Uh, that didn't help at all, man. Still tracking though. That's kind of where Martin Hendel ended up yesterday. Yeah, that's kind of where Ricky's putt was. Yeah. Right? Bogey putt, right? Mm -hmm. gonna, he might have a little bit of a crease. It's going to be in that 45, 50 foot range though. No, no guarantees with that. Yeah. Chris Dickerson. It's a nice drive from Chris Dickerson. In great position to birdie from here. Chris not having the day he hoped for though, sitting two over on the round. That works. That was a good one. Yeah. Good tree. Sometimes they help you on that green. They help you on the up shots and they, they hurt, hurt you on the putts. They do, yeah. When it comes to the M shot, they usually do slow you down. You knock one of those, take some speed off. Yeah, putting through them sometimes can be a bit of a pain depending on which angle you're coming from. And you can see a lot of people through 17 as we have our little backup on 18. Yep. Got to give a shout out to my boy Matty O. What do you do? He is in the bubble for the top 10 spots. Ooh. Nico Castro with that nine under round just outside in 12th place. Speaking of Matty O, here he is on 18. And those guys are longtime friends, so I'm sure Nico Castro is watching. And that's no, not going to no. help. Oh, that is in the out of bounds area. That opens the door for the 16 unders to make a top 10 tie. Well, I th because there's so many people in ninth place, there's not actually a tenth place. Ah, oh, you're right about that. Well, Martin Hendel's still out on the course. Isaac Robinson is on his last hole. Mm -hmm. Matty O, we saw him just drop one. That was a nice upshot there from Drew. Should salvage a par on 15 for him. Actually, Nico's a past champion too. I don't got to worry about it. Oh, that's right, huh? Yep. So, 
looking at Paul Macbeth. Can he find an alley to this basket? That looks bad. Ooh. <laughs> All kinds of bad. It doesn't look good. Oh, he's well out here. The gallery is getting closer to the shack, man. It's getting loud outside. I'm hearing some, some action out that door. Oh, wow, this is desperation play. Big time desperation play. If he doesn't get up and down from here, game over. Pretty close to it, especially if Klein can birdie 18. Yeah. Paul throwing three, just trying to salvage the par on hole 15. Let him fight another hole. That's pretty good. Oh, He's got an open look. It's stopped in a great spot, if nothing else. 35 footer, maybe. It's better than nothing. Mm hmm. Got a chance. That's all the man needs, right? Most of the time, he's got a feels swing, like he's got it. a chance. Yeah. I heard what the uh, the cheers were about. I'll see if we got it on video before I spoil it, though. You can hit the mute button. Tell me. <laughs> Hopefully they caught that on video. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Macbeth, this is to save par, and give himself a chance to chase down Kyle Klein. Huge make for the five-time world champion, Philo. Huge. He's got a chance. I'm shaking my head, man. The guy is so incredible to watch play. When the moment becomes the biggest, he yep. seems to shine the brightest. He rises right into he it. He rises right into those moments. He doesn't shy away from them. He stays poised. He stays in his rhythm. He stays in his, in his zone. That laser-like focus of Macbeth, able to salvage and scramble out a very unlikely par. This is Martin Hendel putting for par on 15. Big putt for Marty. This keeps him in that top 10 conversation. Oh, off the chains he goes. Just a hair left for Marty. Unfortunately, that's going to drop him back a stick. Mm. He'll be joining Nico LaCastro in the 16 under conversation. Still got a chance to make his way back in that top 10 and earn himself a... An exemption for next year. There is a birdie for Chris Dickerson, but that is unfortunately too little too late for his championship dreams. Par for Drew, bogey for Hendel. And we're going to show you that Paul Macbeth putt again. Massive moment for the tournament. Big time. I mean, you'd think if he should come back and take this win. That putt makes the difference. I mean, every play makes It's on the list, right? I mean, yeah. every, every play from here on in is a, it's going to be a difference maker, but he misses that, it's pretty much over. Kyle Klein hanging out on hole 18, waiting for it to clear out so we can try his hand at this final hole one more time. Try to get it into the house, 26, 27 under par, and see what one Mr. Macbeth can do to make up the difference. Simon doing Simon well, we things on 18. <laughs> this yep. is what we were talking about. I was about. hoping they caught it, and our human DVR Geo had it on lock. Whoa. If you're wondering what he's trying to do, he is trying to take on this whole fairway and make that man be up on top of the hill. And he did it. <laughs> The highlight reel back at it again. You gotta love that smile from Simon once he pulls a shot like that. Such off. a fun guy. <laughs> oh no. Look at that scorecard though, man. That is just some wreckage. A couple hockey sticks for the half Canadian. But kind of a brutal day. He's fallen back into twenty first place after being pretty much in the mix earlier today with all those bogey strokes and yeah. sliding backwards all afternoon. Well, at least he'd give you a good show, if nothing else. Oh, he's good at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Best ever doing that. Yes, actually. Ricky Waisaki on the dock of 18. He's going to need that to dig in. Backspin for oh, oh, Ricky Waisaki again, just a little too hot. Somehow got it yesterday, but not two days in a row. Yeah, I could just tell from the shape of that, just coming in too fast, too high up the hill. Mm -hmm. Ricky Waisaki headed to the drop zone. He really needs to do that up and down to keep himself in a position for third place and stay on that podium. Right. Joel. Also earns him an exemption. Joel Freeman just won back. This is Nate Sexton with an Excalibur on hole 18. Goes the wind lifting it. Let's see if that sticks in. No, that is oh. in the OB for half Nate a Sexton disc as OB. Well. Can just tell out the gate, man. The wind is blowing off of their left shoulder. It's going to increase the speed and exaggerate the angle. Let's see if Kyle Klein now having a few guys miss the mark. If he can make the adjustment, Kyle Klein. Uh oh, that's going to need some help. I think, I think got it got the it. Roll back. Green flag for Kyle Klein. What a break. That could have been disastrous for the youngster. Now he's more than likely going to have to play for par. I don't think he's really in a great shot to attack. No, no right? It's just a little too steep of the hill, and it's going to be a real low ceiling. Joel Freeman oh, now. Ugh. That's way early on the let go. He is tracking high. He's going to need some help. Oh, he got it too. He got the help. Sit. Mm, so close. Ooh, oh, oh, wow. Some spicy drives on 18 there, Philo. I, I don't know. A little too close for comfort, if you ask me. Yeah. He what a great finishing hole, huh? Playing as the hardest hole on the course today. 13% birdies. Not a whole lot of guys really want to challenge that green. It is tight and dangerous. Going to have to deal with this opening shot, though, this drive. Got OB all along the left side, obviously, with the water. Then you can see that string line right there on the tree's edge. High OB up on the right side, and it plays into a bottleneck. And it gets real skinny right in here. The ground play is so fickle. If you're on the left side, you are going OB almost every time. If you're up on the high right side and you have the wrong angle, it is not going to come back down the hill. Very, very tight corner to shape out this green. Colt, can, Colton knocking in some nice putts there. He certainly <laughs> did. We are popping back to 16 for our lead card coverage. Paul McBeth, one off the lead. It's... I called this an undertaker yesterday, but it is a putter. That's impressive. <laughs> I need the window, and that's getting pushed to the right end. Ooh, he's in. Just inside like circle? Back of circle. Back one. of circle one. Okay. Maybe just outside Kyle Klein. He's going. He is. If this finishes, dude, shot of the tournament. Right oh, now. oh, decision time off that one, though, man. Such a scary putt. He's got to lay it up, right? What do you do, Phil? What do you do? I feel like there's no great answer. We'll find out <laughs> what he decides to do. Part of me says he's going to take a stab at it. He's a really gutsy putter. He is, and he's got a lot of courage, and he's he's not afraid to throw the disc, you mm -hmm. know. And I think if he knocks that in, it gives him a better chance. If he lays up, he knows Paul's still got a couple of holes he could catch him. Right. Nate Sexton throwing three on 18. Got it in the right airspace. Let's watch the finish. Not quite enough, but that'll be good for an up and down. Yeah. Be a bogey, I believe, with the OB stroke. Correct, sir. Ricky Waisaki also had the OB drive. We'll be watching his third here momentarily. Oh, yeah, I 
I did want to look at yours actually, yeah, because I felt like the marker. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm back there. That's the thing. But... Where do you guys feel like this? Joel Freeman, just enough of his disc on the safe side of that line to get the green flag. Was way down there. Yeah. Um, I just but yeah. I mean, he was, he was right here. Sure. And that's it's hard for me to go. Like, sure. Sure. Right. Well, you go that's his job to pay attention. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Cool. I feel like he had a good angle. Yeah. That's this that's, flag I is. I mean, that's supposed to be mine, but I yeah. Think I'm a little yeah. Off yeah. 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 Like Take it up halfway. Little, yeah. Halfway in between. So the group has figured out where Rick and Joel's lies are. I guess where Rick's lie was was the one in question. Yeah, there's no question about Joel's shot. He's sitting right there on the line. Yep. No extra conversation needed about that. <laughs> but Ricky Wysocki, unfortunately, finds the hazard or the OB and <clears throat> got to confer with his card mates and not listen to the gallery. They don't get to make the call. Inside. Early. Yeah. Way early. That's a lot out of bounds. It's the wrong shape altogether for Joel Freeman. Got fortunate once, but not twice. He's going to be moving into a tie with Sexton, most likely, with a bogey. Yep. Nope. Sexton's going to bogey as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. He went OB off the tee. Yep. The shot, the you know, third shot, leaves him out of position somewhere in circle two. He's going to have a long one. Long, long putting for par. I don't think he's going to run that. Rick figuring out his play for his third shot on 18. So Ricky currently is 24. You've got Freeman at 23 for the time being. So Rick could still get third with a with a bogey, right? I believe this is getting up and down for par if he can. If he can do it, yeah. There it is. Yeah. So. Nicely done. Cool. Going back to 16, this is Paul McBeth for birdie and to tie for the lead. Just circle one. No even a chance. Weird effort. That was probably the worst putt I've ever seen the man throw. Yeah. That was not very good. It was, that was not great. No connection there for Macbeth, and he's going to have that long walk to think about it, and we'll see what happens with young Kyle Klein walking up the fairway up towards the green. He's going to have a circle two putt. That could really put the pressure on Macbeth. If he knocks that thing in, Macbeth is going to have to come back and earn the next two birdies to push it to a playoff, I believe. Yep. He lays it up and waits and sees what happened with Paul Macbeth. He's opening the door for McBeast to do McBeast things, and I would rather take my chances, I think, at this stage in the game. Playing Put against it in your own hands. hands. Put it in your own hands, young guy. If you live, you know, you live and you die by the sword. I mean, that's what these guys do. They, throw, they play aggressive, they play hard, they play fast. They take a lot of risks. You think about it, this is the biggest decision of Kyle Klein's life right now. Maybe of his disc golf career. His disc golf I don't know life. About his life. We'll give though. it his disc well, golf life. His disc golf life. He's had to make in his life, That's right? That's true. He's a young fellow. I'm sure he yeah, couldn't have been too complicated or complex at this yeah, stage, yeah. right? But Speaking of that, I got after he won the Mid America Open, right? Went to the prom that night. That's right. Yeah. So he's still a young guy. Yep. Nate Sexton. He's gonna chuck this under and get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Nate Sexton. That'll move him into a tie with Drew Gibson at 21 down. A big time. moment right now, though. Here we go, Philo. I'm up on my feet again, man. <laughs> I want to see the young dude knock it in. He's thinking about it at a bare minimum. 
This is a very makeable putt for Kyle Klein. Totally is. Downhill, it's going to feel a little bit closer, a little bit of headwind to think about. Oh, my goodness. Let's go, Kyle. He is in circle two. Barely. Good try, buddy. <laughs> you missed in the right place. Now it's all up to one Paul Macbeth. If he can go birdie birdie, the, the ring is his. If not, one birdie gets him a playoff. Here we go, Philo. Woo! Here we go, buddy. I'm sure he doesn't like that result, but he doesn't hate it either. Joel Freeman. He's putting for bogey. So low, it thankfully hit the curb and he can drop it from there. Let's go, Ricky. Ricky Waisaki to save par. And this is for solo third. And Rick makes good. Not the result he wanted, but it's a top three finish for the two-time world champion. Joel Freeman. Could have been his day, man. Those circle one putts, right? And there's Kyle Klein tapping in for par on 18, 25 down. And all he can do is sit and wait and turn in that scorecard. Is he at 26? Something weird is happening with Kyle Klein's U-disc right now. They better not take any birdies away. They just gave guy. him a bogey on one. Inches. Oh. From making things real hard for Mr. McBeth to come back and snatch this away. So what are you saying happened on uh, hole one? They, they, gave, they just gave Kyle a bogey on one. And wasn't he at 26 before? He just was at 26 on mine, and he's sitting at 26. It said he birdied one, two, and three. Now it's showing bogey, birdie, birdie. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Either I, which way, uh, this is a crucial moment for Mr. McBeth right now. If he can go McBeast mode and park this. Gives him a good shot. Raptor forehand from oh, McBeast. He's pushing that way out to the wide side. Between circles, Ian. Yes, sir. A chance. But I'm so confused. Is Kyle really at 24? I'm not sure what's going on, man. Those are two huge strokes we right now. I, uh, production is working on it right now. So we'll, we'll find out as soon as we let you know. I don't remember Rick making bogey on one, did he? Kyle Klein birdied hole one, man. Kyle Klein's at 26 down. Remember, he birdied hole one. He was just up the hill for the it, basket. It just made look that what putt. happened. Look what happened to the first look. Joel's got a five. Drew's got a four. Rick's got yes, a four. Somebody something, fat something, fingered. Yeah. All right, so it, I know it says Kyle's at 24. I promise you he's at 26. Somebody's trying to pencil in the <laughs> U-disc. Pencil whip this. Pencil <laughs> <laughs> whip the U-disc. <laughs> a McBeast fan's going yeah, ham on yes, U-disc yeah, right yeah, now. Like, he's going to win this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking servers or something. No doubt. You wonder what's been going on. They're trying to throw a glitch in the system like this is a... I'm not going to say that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Paul Macbeth. It looks like he's winning by a stroke. I promise you he's down by a stroke. Two to play. Circle two bid for birdie on 17. This is getting... 50 some odd feet for Macbeth. He's almost at the back edge of circle two. Really just conceded that... That so, tee shot. So Drew is showing him Udisc, but Udisc is wrong right now. He could be telling Paul the wrong thing. You never know. We're probably all confused right now. Is, Nate, are you on the ground? Do you, do you know what is going on right now down there? I guess we don't have, we don't have perk right now. Sorry, guys. We will clear this up, though. This is wild. Martin Handel getting up and down safely on the green with his old school San Marino. Yep. Take a par and get out of here. 
unfortunately, Martin did slip from that top 10 standing. He's going to need a birdie. Nope, it's not going to happen for him. It's too off the pace right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, he won't be getting that exemption. Chris Dickerson is defending. He's going to take his par. Mm -hmm. Everybody's staring at their phones, trying to figure out what's going on. They just removed Kyle Clyde's score on one. So now he has zero, like no recorded score on one. They're just playing mind games with these guys. I know he got a birdie, though. I remember it. Uh, Paul McBeth, either which way, he knows he needs to knock this one in. I hope he knows he needs that. I'm sure he does. He's, he's taking this long. Unbelievable stuff from Paul McBeth. We are once again tied at the top, Philo. How does he do that? It's unbelievable, man. It's How does he unbelievable. do that? Unbelievable. You can never count the man out, right? No. People have been trying to throw shade at this guy for the past couple of seasons because he didn't win every dang tournament. It doesn't matter. He's still one of the best players to ever play the game, and you cannot count the man out when you give oh, him an opportunity. My Goodness. Big, big drive coming up for Macbeth on 18 Ooh, now. Huh? Implications. Every shot on 18 is going to be big. There is so much danger lurking. Drew Gibson, long bid for birdie. Not to be for Drew. He will stay one back of Nate Sexton and a tie for six with Chris Dickerson currently. Dude, how does Paul do that? It's wild, isn't it? You guys made up with some different stuff, man. Everybody, like a lot, most people putt worse under pressure. He putts better under pressure. That's what made him the beast, right? Yep. All those pressure packed moments he rose to the occasion. Made himself a diamond. <laughs> Certainly has. Ferris Bueller joke coming from Alan, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got some more stat mando for, uh, for Paul. If he wins, this will be Paul's 16th major victory and his first since 2019 Worlds. For reference, the champ has 19. On his heels. Yeah. Very much so the Tiger Woods to the Jack Nicklaus of our sport, isn't it? Yeah, it totally is. He's, he's on his heels. This is only Kyle Klein's 46th MPO singles tournament. Take another look back at this Paul Macbeth bomb from between circles. When he needed it most. Double fist pump. Let's take a look from the backside. Online, swinging that thing into the heart of the chains. Ah, uh. He's pumped. Now he's got to simmer back down and throw a dime on 18. Get up and down, he wins the tournament. Isn't that crazy? It is. He tried to cough it up to like four guys, man. He had a stretch of holes where you're like, it's anybody's game. And then all of a sudden, boom, the yep. last six holes, three birdies. Gets himself right back in contention after that blow up on 12. Yeah, that four through 12 stretch, he was really just kind of falling off the pace, but nothing much doing there. Just really lackluster performance in the middle of the round, but. True McBeast form <laughs> right at the end when he needs it most. Birdie, birdie, par, par, birdie. Let's we'll see what he does on the tee here at 18. He's got to land safe. That's the first priority. Must land safe. He, I saw you had a buzz. It, no, he's not going with the buzz. It looks like a mid-range. I, I think it's, it might even be a putter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. I've seen some weird things happen that just when the disc comes out that low and left. Yeah, oh, yeah. That could have cut, cut rolled over there. I thought that was going to cut and yeah. OB. It can do all. I don't know what he was going for, but he's safe. Maybe he just plays for the par and we get some extra holes. Somebody called Jim Mora. <laughs> I can do it. Playoffs? <laughs> you want to talk about playoffs? <laughs> I can't even win a game. Perfect. Dickerson on 18 with his M3. Chris, not the day he wanted, but he's still in a tie for fourth right now. There, 
there's that little straight push that he needed. Perfect shot oh, from Dickerson. Lovely Ideal there. place to attack from. That's different from what he did the past two rounds. It is, you're right. A little bit higher up, a little mm -hmm. bit more in the center. Yep, yep. Chris Dickerson in prime position to attack. I'm sure a little bit disappointing he wasn't able to bring his A game today, but overall, top five after you know, returning champion. Nothing to scoff at and hang your head about. No doubt. Buzz coming from Drew Gibson. See if that negative shows up and drags it towards the middle. Hopefully it doesn't fade out too much. Gosh, that Drew Gibson power, that late turn. 400 feet uphill with the mid-range, making it look like a smooth little layup shot with all that arm speed. Drew Gibson also in prime position. That guy is something else. Yeah, he could, uh, he's going to finish in fourth place mm -hmm. alone, potentially, if he can make birdie here. Okay. Incred that's great showing. It would be. Right now he's tied with Joel and Nate, Chris Dickerson also. Martin Hendel channeling his Philo. That's a DX rock. Smart play, Martin. Simmer down. See what I'm oh, saying? Oh, no. yeah. Just get, you catch the wrong piece of ground, you get that hard pan skip. I don't lie to you guys, man. I'm not making this <laughs> stuff up. That's why I was a little nervous for Macbeth's shot when it left his hand. It looked so low and left, and the ground play down there is... So mm. what, what's he doing Sketchy. from here? Is, oh, we'll take another look at this thing on 17 yeah. again. The clutchest of all clutchness putts, right? <laughs> <laughs> the gallery going ham, Paul flexing on him. What a great moment that was. Snatch that thing out the basket and uh. give a little lip and snarl back to the gallery. <laughs> I'm sure he did. And Paul McBeth. I think he is, he's in a position he can attack. He's going to have a nice shape that he can work with there. He's not too pinched off on the high side, which is really the worst so that's to be at. That's what he can do, Philo. What is he going to do? I'm not a psychic on that. Uh, we'll see what Disky grabs in his hand, and that'll give me a little bit more of an idea. But Do we know our, what's our playoff holes, by the way? Because that could honestly affect how he plays this shot, right? 1, 17, and 18 yeah. are our playoff holes. Okay. Kyle Klein had a decision on the green. Paul McBeth has a decision on the fairway. Well, if I'm a guy like Paul McBeth in this situation, you got to think you got to attack. That's man. a Zeus. He's going for it. <clears throat> you don't want to try to go into extra holes and give the kid another opportunity. You take your chances now. You seal this win with a perfect shot. Collect your third ring. He is absolutely going for it. How do you like it, Ian? A little shy. Let's see how the flare skip goes. Ooh, all right. Fortunate just to fizzle out, so we're looking at a playoff here. He ain't running that putt. That's no, way too dangerous no. to try to force the issue. Risk award isn't there on that we'll one. see Kyle Klein and Paul McBeth heading to hole number one here in just a minute. Oh, my goodness. Last time Kyle Klein was in the playoff, he took Andrew Marweed. We're going to see out. history one way or the other today, Philo. No doubt. Uh, Paul grabbing his third. Kyle grabbing his first. Man, I am shaking in my boots Me over too, here. I'm man. excited with anticipation to see what's going to happen. This is incredible. This tournament never disappoints, man. It never does. That's why it's a major. Yep. Best talent in the world. All in one place. One of the best run events in the world, too. One of the toughest you know, venues to compete on with all this OB everywhere. and it challenges you all day long. All it just day never long. lets up, It man. does not. It just progressively gets more and more difficult as you go. Martin Hendel grabbing his meter in after the OB drive on 18. I got a fun one for you after yeah. this shot. Okay. in there tightly, Martin Handel. Let's see it, buddy. All right. That'll do inside circle one for Martin Handel. I have a feeling he'll take a stab at that putt, and he would be the highest placing international player at the tournament, besting one Simon Lazat, our finish 
uh, competitors Vino and uh, Lucas, both coming over from from around Tampere, uh, Helsinki area. Uh -huh. Those two guys are monsters, but you know, always want to throw a little shout out to our internationals for making the trip. Albert Tom finished in 42nd. Johanny Vino, that guy's got some game. He's a Masters age player, I believe. It's oh. still crush. Oh, Vino Mikola. Yeah. Shot, if it stops rolling, sit down. It sit oh, after come that. on. It sit, sit down after that. He's still watching it. Oh. No. What brutal just no. happened? How did that happen? Bad luck. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Bad luck is how that, that happens. That thing looked like it was going to fall over about five times. Unbelievable reaction off the ground. But yeah, Vino and uh, Lucas, they traveled here together. They're leaving together tied at 37th place. <laughs> 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 they were kind of flip-flopping the first couple of days. Oh, and ended up. funny. It's actually... Uh, I think Vino, yeah, came roaring back on him, shot a couple down, and Lucas had a rough day, plus four. They'll be heading back over to Finland, tied at 37th place. Drew Gibson going jokery with his second shot. Dude goes mid-range putter on hole 18. Something you don't see very often. A couple more little murals, and that's going to be deep inside circle one for Drew Gibson. Let's take another look at this ridiculous reaction Dickerson got. He really didn't deserve that. How are you gonna how are you no. gonna do the returning champion? Look, like it hits this? all the way up here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then this. Look at the like, stop there. It should have The stopped wind there. blowing up the hill kind of kept it up. And then reverse face. Oh, my oh, gosh. gosh, just heartbreaking stuff. That's what happens I mean, when you're on a slope though. You thankfully know? it wasn't like for the you know, affecting who won. You no, know, but it still doesn't feel good. No, that's not gonna matter much to Chris at this point. Yeah. It's either a win or it doesn't matter for guys like a Chris Dickerson. Yes, sir. So Paul McBeth has this for the win if he wants it, but I would be surprised if he tries. He's looking around a little bit. He kind of is, Marking isn't his he? disc. What's going on over here? Is this guy about to get extremely aggressive on an extremely dangerous putt? And he could lay up and go to a playoff. Let's see. For the win, Ian. Let's see it. Nick Beth from Birdie from Circle Two. <laughs> Fortunate for McBeth wow. that sat down. The aggression. Seeing a one young Kyle Klein losing his you know what <laughs> right about now up in the gallery. I can't believe he ran that, Philo. Such courage for Macbeth. I mean, he know he doesn't want to give the young guy another break, you know? Yeah. He's already given five, four guys a chance to take down this tournament today, and none of them wanted to really snatch it out of his grasp. And he figured, why not take my chances now? Mm -hmm. not Usually he misses the first one. If he does, he makes the second one. I'm sure that was the mentality. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. He had a lot of chains to look at. A little bit of a backdrop to kind of slow him up if he should have airballed. And that rolled over that little piece of wood, too? That, that's in the water. That's insult to injury. Big time. And a long uphill putt. Yeah. Tailwind's going to help push the disc down even more, so he's got to aim over the band even if it has a chance of going in. Fantastic putt for Dickerson. Saving four. I haven't seen him make one of those big bombs all week, it feels like, and right on the very last hole, Chris Dickerson shows up. The robot chicken, and your defending champion, unfortunately, didn't have the stuff it required today to keep up with the Macbeth or Kyle Klein, but still got to tip the hat. And that putt mattered, too. Kept him in a tie for fourth. Everything matters, but, you know. Yeah. He's He's already got an exemption. He's not worried about that. Maybe a little bit of extra cash. Yeah. Drew Gibson looking to move out of that tie for fourth into solo third with a make here. Yeah. Oh, nice cut by Drew. That in fourth place alone? Yes, it will. And 
kind of a weird looking putt here for Paul. This is up a lot. And he's going to okay. lose a little bit of an angle, but that's yeah. not too bad for Macbeth. Tailwind putt, just got to make sure he gets the disc in the chains. He's not far. Yep, he's got this. 17 feet tops for Macbeth to send it to a playoff. Dead center. You will meet young Kyle Klein on the tee of hole one for extra holes. You start to hear the, the chance of playoff throughout the gallery. They all know what's coming. Another historic event, huh? Out here in Winthrop. Sign me up for this. And he was this close. To taking it down. The chain out. Just oh, just soft. Inch and a half, man. Wow. Maybe one inch from the center of the pole, and that would have snuck into the low left side of that cage and game over. Macbeth would have walked out of here. Victorious once again, unfortunately. Oh my goodness, Not what to a... be for Macbeth, and we head back to hole one. Another day they'll be talking about for a long time out of Winthrop. Absolutely. I mean, that's what championships are made of, right? Sure. I mean, that's what they're all about are these special moments. And it's way more fun when it's a dogfight. You know, it's not so much fun when somebody just comes out and blows right. everybody yeah. out and there's no storylines. There's yeah. nothing to talk we about. We want to see those pressure putts, of those course. incredible moments, We want to see moments, all the pressure man. points. We want to see the guys struggle a little bit. Not like intentionally bad, but, you know, we don't want to see them have a battle. Yeah, we do. And we got a big battle we today, guys. We have a battle. Kyle Klein, the youngster out of Michigan, rookie of the year last year. Got a couple of nice tour wins this season, beating healthy fields as yes. well. Idlewild was a pretty full that house. Was, there was, was a lot of guys out there. Mm -hmm. Took him down, beat Andrew Marwe in playoffs, so he was one for one in playoff wins, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. I don't know. That one went to two holes, I want to say. Mm -hmm. they, they both piped a nice one down hole one, and I think he got him on two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was... So he's got some playoff experience. It wasn't against the five-time world champion, yep. and in front of this gallery at this event, we'll see how he handles it. Uh, we are going to take a very quick break when we come back. The playoffs are going down. You are 332 feet from the basket. You are 270 feet from the basket. Sun is starting to set and in the west. The weather is dropping down. It's getting a little cool and nippy out there. We are just to the right of that building we were looking at. The shack, as it's affectionately known. Kyle Klein will be the first person ever to win. Not coming into the day first or second. Will he grab his first major? We'll find out. I believe they flipped a coin to see who would go first. Kyle Klein has got the honors. Look at that gallery. Thousands of people out there, my man. He got on that one. He's going to need some help. He is on Does the wrong it. side. Oh, Door open. Will Door Paul walk through? Wide open for Paul Macbeth at the moment. One Luna away from icing this tournament. It's a narrow doorway, though, this fairway. It certainly is. Got that double mando right off the bat. Got to avoid that down log for the win. Macbeth. That's a nice 
Swain. Oh my goodness, he almost walked it off, Philo. Circle's the edge, beast though. Move, yeah, yeah. walk off base to <laughs> finish things off. Wow, legendary would that have been? Statement, man, big time, epic. That's what that would have been. It still is. Still got a chance. Look, was he just inside the circle? Is that yeah, what we saw? He's right on the back edge of circle one. Call that 28 feet for Macbeth. This is one of those putts he's in his garage in his backyard doing day in, day out. Do this blindfolded, one hand tied behind his back, one leg probably. Take another look at that drive from Paul Macbeth. On a rope. Pretty much pure to right off the gate. Had a chance for a little wind to push that into the chain. Just slides past him. There it is, man. Right at the back edge of that circle one. Man, the guy's focus is so... It's almost unparalleled. You, know, you think of a Ricky Wysocki and that focus and intensity. And Macbeth a little more subtle with the intensity than a Ricky Wysocki, but... Both of those guys are just. Kyle Klein, you know he's giving it everything he can from 55. Get it. Oh, oh my goodness, what a bid from the youngster. Could you imagine he cashed that? Oh, man. Well, now it's all up to Paul Macbeth. Gosh, he was off by a foot maybe there. Here comes the gallery. Oh, the gallery control today must have been out of control. All these people just aching to get an eye on Paul Macbeth. And here he is, Paul Macbeth, for the win. One step closer to the great one, Ken Climo and Major wins. No! Yeah, 2021 champion, Paul Macbeth. All right, joining us, one hole playoff, Paul McBeth, you're the champion at the USDGC. Tell us how it feels. It feels good. I mean, there used to be a log right there, and I missed a putt from there a couple years ago, so that was a good spot to make that from. You've talked all year about how your putter has let you down, but in the most clutch moments, it didn't this week. Tell us how you got over that. Just knowing, you know, just keep giving myself opportunities. I, know, I knew I had a little bit of a lead starting. Uh, you know, my card wasn't playing too well early on, but I knew... There's a lot of people out there, and Kyle proved that. So uh, just had to keep giving myself opportunities and just trying to put it in the basket. And speak to Kyle Klein for a moment. You were 13-3 and three against him this year, and you pushed it all the way to a playoff from the chase card. Were you keeping an eye on him and what he was doing? Um, I, I kind of knew, uh, you know, some, some people were chasing for sure. Uh, Kyle's score kept switching there at the end, so kind of changed my, my, my mind on 17 go forehand, just put it really safe rather than trying to get the birdie when he was at 27, I think, or 28. So uh, changed that a little bit, but I knew I, still, I was still on the green, so I had to make that putt, but you know, Kyle played great, and uh, you know, it made, I think it made it better for the fans for sure. At the beginning of the week, you said that you like to win this every three years, 2015, 2018, and now 2021. Were you projecting a little? You know, it's, a, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to win this one. It happened to be the third year, so I said it. You're only the third player to win this three or more times, putting you even more in an elite class that you were already in. How does that feel? It feels great. I mean, shoot, I was 200 and something feet away from having two majors this year, having another world title. So this feels good to come back and, and prove it on this and one more event for the rest of the year. But, uh, no, I mean, I'm in great company with the third one for sure. Averaging 1.5 in major finishes this year, not too bad overall. Anything you'd like to say to all the fans, the thousands of deering people out there that are all watching? 
Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support for whoever your favorite player it player is. We all feel it. So I just want to thank everyone that's out here as well. So um, I don't know. This is an exciting time for disc golf. There it is again, your three-time USDGC champion, Paul McBath. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Thanks for working, man. Took it down for Paul McBeth. Yeah. Party has begun in Rock Hill for Mr. McBeth. <laughs> Doing McBeast things right on time to ice this tournament. Big look, circle one putt. Look at this reaction from Paul. Oh, you know have he you, wanted have that. Have you ever man. seen him react like that? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have, but I'm sure that this one means a little extra because I'm especially on all the shade that's been coming his way this yep. year. People saying, yep. oh, Paul McBeth, he's washed up. The new talent on the block is going to wipe him up, and he doesn't got it anymore. Exactly. Like, eh, I never believed that. I mean, golf is, you know, one of those games that comes in waves. You know, there's peaks and flows, and yes, you're exactly. going to have your highs and lows. You're going to have some good weeks. You're going to have some rough weeks. And, Paul, he's, look at this guy, man. He's one of the most dialed-in competitors this sport has ever seen. You know, he really set the standard for what we know as the current stage of disc golf. Yeah. And can't count the guy out. He's barely in his 30s, right? Late he just 20s. hit 30, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. He's still in his prime. Yeah. Without a doubt, our generation's goat. And he put on a, an absolute show today. Yeah, he did. Oh, he had a little bit of a lull there in the middle. Yeah, but he, he did. did bring it back strong towards the end. Just enough plays. Didn't run out of holes. Got it to a playoff and takes down young Kyle Klein after one hole and a big putt. What an absolute show. Unreal. What another week, man. We did it again, buddy. Yeah. Good time. Back to good back times, USDGCs. Yeah. Awesome show. Good time. What, what do you think this means for Paul McBeth and his, his legacy? Uh, I think it gets him one step closer to reaching his main goal of surpassing Ken Climo as mm -hmm. the greatest of all time, you know, and I think there's only one way to really do that, and that's to surpass him on the wins column in the majors yeah i think that's really what it's all about and uh i think you think about it any other sport you know everybody's trying to compare who's the goat to michael jordan you know who's the next in line or can anybody surpass him and it's like unless if you do what he did right no yeah you know it doesn't matter which era it was michael jordan set the standard he got to six finals he won them all yeah. lebron went to 10 he got four he lost six times you know and there's that's where the debate gets drawn and yep. it's the same thing with a Macbeth versus climo i don't think you can really give Macbeth that nod until he surpasses Climo. He's got 13 now to 16. He's on his heels or 16 to 19, whichever it is. It's yeah, pretty oh, impressive. Thank you, thank you. He's yeah, right there in the 19. ballpark and Macbeth is not going to give up anytime soon. He's got many years of good golf out in front of him. Yes, he does. And today is his day. He earned it. Yeah. I think the golfers kind of hit their prime later, you know, than the traditional sports. I feel like I have as you know? a golfer, you know, in yeah. my early 20s into my early 30s or my mid-20s into my early 30s. I was still learning the game and really didn't have the experience necessary to come out here and dominate at any certain point. And unfortunately, my mental awareness and capabilities increased as my physical starts <laughs> to decline. And it's like I'm on the wrong trajectory. Isn't that for annoying? Both. Yeah, and it's like, oh, man, I wish I would have started when I was 13 or 14 <laughs> like the rest of these guys. And Absolutely. I'd be in a whole different position right now. But, you know, I'm thankful just to I'm be a part of this, this man. Yeah, it's awesome, though. man. It's great to be here. It's great to be in the mix. You know, it's been a fun 15-year 15 career, 15 year career, and there's still plenty more to come. Yeah. Glad to have you in the booth, man. Thanks, brother. It's been a pleasure working with you and all the guys out here yeah, that are man. making this show happen, all of our producers, directors, all the camera operators, and the There's hundreds a, an of volunteers. Army, There's an army out here this weekend doing. So many people put in work to make this event possible, so we got to thank them. Big salute to you guys. Thank Absolutely. you so much for all your thank hard you. work. We couldn't be here without you. Yep. Of course, my title sponsor, my main sponsor, Innova Champion, got to give them a big shout-out. They've been running this tournament from the jump. Got to give them the, the acknowledgement they deserve for all the hard work and 20 years plus mm -hmm. of running the USDGC. It's, it's incredible already, and it somehow gets better every year. It does. You know, and they just the, fix whatever they can fix, and they, they just do. improve. And they do. It's just an absolute gem. Wow. I hope you guys enjoyed the week with Juliana and Hannah, myself, and Philo. Should we get out of here, buddy? I'm ready to go party, buddy. Yeah, it looks wild out, but let's go ahead out there. All right, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Disc Golf Network this weekend, guys. We'll catch you next weekend for the Pro Tour Championships. Well, that's going to be fun. Be well, everybody. Ah, there you go.